The story begins with a scene of dark clouds, a ray of lightning hitting straight down a mountain. In a coma, a young man suddenly woke up. At this time, the surrounding scenery was extremely strange, making him confused and wondering where this was. Suddenly a severe pain hit my head. A series of memories appeared. Lam Fong, the sixth prince of the Southern Empire, a waste of the Lam Concubine's palace, was lucky enough to be loved by the emperor when he was drunk. His cultivation level was low and he had no power. He could only come to the Western Qin Empire as an intimate prince, otherwise he would only become a sacrifice in the struggle for the throne in the south. Unfortunately, he was assassinated on the way to get along, and due to panic, he died in the hospital bed. Perhaps this is the most pitiful prince in history. The young man held his head in panic, could it be that I am the sixth prince of Nam Lam Fall? Have I gone through space? The space began to quiet down along with his thoughts. Then Lam Fong exclaimed with a face full of determination, I didn't expect that I would come here from time to time, I will become the strongest person, I can no longer live without dignity like this. Suddenly a ding came from the system, startling him. The system displays an information panel in front of Lam Fong. It offers three options, option one, universal lottery. Option number two, improve mental capacity. Option number three, super spiritual treasure. Suddenly Lam Fong smiled. The current selection opportunity is only once. Finally, Lam Fong happily made the decision, I choose them all. As soon as he finished speaking, strange phenomena continued to occur. The three options just now appeared. Then they slowly merge together. They keep on gradually accumulating small things into big things, and then produce three different objects, a sword, a potion, and a card. He was extremely surprised at what appeared before his eyes. Gently raised my hand with the intention of touching it. Here it is. As soon as I touched it, the ball cracked. A spiritual treasure sword immediately appeared in front of him. Next is a blue potion. Finally, a strange card. Looking at the three items in front of him, Lam Fong smiled. So it's a prop. I wonder if I can only choose once. I chose all of them, but I didn't expect it to be successful. The system suddenly shows a red bug warning. This made him panic. Hey, could it be that it chooses itself? The rays of light began to converge into a sphere. Lam Fong quickly caught it. After that, he continuously put it into his mouth and angrily looked at the red bug system. The bug system is a system that can be recovered without playing. Putting it in his mouth continuously like that made him unable to help but choke. Her cheeks were swollen and her face was completely red. Knowing what the bug meant, he froze. And then Lam Fong felt that this red bug warning was still okay. However, why is there no reaction? As soon as he finished speaking, a blue light appeared in his eyes. Once again there was a magical power surrounding him. Lam Fong looked at the strength flowing through his body with emotion. Sure enough, the body's functions have been activated, and the cultivation level is about to increase to the ninth level. At this time, Lam Hong Ngoc was the close maid of the sixth prince of the southern empire. She opened the door and saw Lam Fong and spoke, Your Highness, you're awake. This made her very happy, she smiled happily. The first action she could do was to hug Lam Fong, I thought he would not survive. In his heart, Lam Fong's nose was bleeding. With a maid as thoughtful as your ruby by my side, how could I bear to die? Having such a beautiful maid in my arms is truly wonderful. And then he gently patted her head. The system displays a notification, system mission, inviting users within seven days, must kill at least two people to declare the original situation and receive a privilege. After completing the mission, there will be another chance to choose. Reading those words, Lam Fong was a bit surprised. What, is there such a quick mission? At this time, suddenly a group of people came outside and rudely kicked in the door of Lam Fong's room. Ruby turned and frowned. Sassy, this is the room of the sixth prince of Nam so, who is it? They rushed in directly without any rules, and proudly introduced themselves as the deputy commander of the Imperial Guard of the Western Qin Empire following the commander's orders to inquire about the sixth prince's injuries. Lam Fong thought to himself and realized that Commander Wei was the one who masterminded the ambush before, and now he came to ask, it certainly didn't have any good intentions. He spoke coldly to the crowd, his highness just has a cold, it's nothing serious, you all go back down. When the deputy commander heard that, he laughed very happily. If the sixth prince is safe, then come with us on a trip. Lam Hong Ngoc once again angrily stood in front of Lam Fong, trying her best to protect him. Don't be rude to your highness, the deputy commander frowned and said, looking down on others. Your highness, out of respect for the emperor Nam Chu, I called you your highness. A lowly prince-in-law like you is not as good as an ordinary commoner. If you know how, then follow us, don't get yourself into trouble. Lam Fong held Hong Ngoc's hand and asked him a provocative question. What if we don't go, then asked him a provocative question. What if we don't go, hearing that, the deputy commander became even angrier. Don't be ignorant. 
Where are you guys? Tie me up. Lam Fong's power is revealed right now. He boldly asked who dared. Everyone around felt the aura was so strong. Everyone stood frozen, unable to do anything in the face of this crisis. The deputy commander was scared and broke out in a cold sweat. Rumor has it that Lam Fong's talent was weak and his ability only reached the fifth level of tempering. The screams just now were, at least in my ninth level, two times higher than mine, unless the rumors were wrong. Lam Fong loudly ordered him to kneel. The pressure of the voice made the deputy commander pale. His legs began to tremble. Then he knelt down, his body was suppressed by pressure, causing him to vomit blood. He now looks like a bereaved dog kneeling in front of Lam Fong. Lam Fong's voice was cold, deputy commander, even fireflies had to compete for light with the moon and stars. Now do you know who is ignorant? After saying that, he used his foot to step on the deputy commander's face. Even though he had been abused to this extent, he was still very speechless and shouted loudly. Get away from your dirty feet. I am the deputy commander of the Imperial Guard of the Western Qin Nation. A trash son-in-law like you, how dare you kill a deputy commander? Lam Fong smirked in response. I am the sixth prince of the south, and let a deputy commander like you offend, I should be beheaded, do you still need courage to kill someone? Hearing Lam Fong's words, the deputy commander's eyes flashed with fear. Having said that, Lam Fong decisively finished him off with a stomp, his head separated from his body. Seeing the deputy commander's head fly out, the juniors couldn't help but be surprised and a little scared. Their legs became unsteady and they kept calling out to the deputy commander. Lam Fong gave a warning. Go back and tell your commander that Tran Tien has committed an offense and your highness has personally punished him. After giving his instructions, Lam Fong told them to retreat. At this time, being respectful is not as good as obeying orders. They all answered yes in unison. However, as a follower and servant of the sixth prince, Hong Ngoc never stopped worrying about his safety. She advised, although your highness's strength has improved compared to before, it is nothing compared to this whole continent. I'm worried that your highness will be injured again. On a quiet full moon night, suddenly there were footsteps. It was the presence of an elder slowly entering the city. The old man did not go inside or say anything, he just stood shyly behind the door and watched the young lady read the letter, perhaps because the elder did not want to bother her. And then she suddenly realized it so she asked, Old Man Tran, what's the matter? Being called by name like that, Old Man Tran immediately clasped his hands to greet the princess. Elder Tran walked in and explained the situation. Just now your fiancé killed the deputy commander of the Trantian Imperial Guard, how should this be handled? That young lady is the great princess of Tai Chin named Tong Van Lin. The princess frowned, her tone decisive as an affirmation that they deserved it. The Imperial Guard has been so leisurely these past few years, it's good to let them go through some hardships. Please go and remind the puppet commander, just say that in five days I will come to check on the band guards, so that he can reorganize his army. Just an order like that is enough for old Tran to understand what Van Lin means, the princess wants to calm down the situation a bit, don't come to cause trouble with that prince anymore, the old slave will leave immediately. Right now it's dark and deserted outside. Lam Fong went for a walk alone to enjoy the quiet space. Absorbing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth on the mountain, he quickly passed the ninth level of tempering. The medicine given by the system was truly top quality. It's true that traveling at night will bring disaster. While Lam Fong was leisurely, an evil person appeared on the porch. The one-eyed man asked when he saw Lam Fong's presence. Old Liu, is this the prince from Nam So who came to live with his son-in-law? Wei Trung Tien could actually send two of our heavenly source realm powerhouses just to kill a trash who was only in the fifth level of tempering. Old Law observed and replied, it's not because this prince killed Vice Commander Tran, He's just a lowly piece of trash with no status, Wei Trung Tien just wants us to solve it. Just decided to be a little neater. Danger is getting closer and closer, but Lam Fong still doesn't know anything, just walking with a happy smile. On the contrary, those two strong people in the natural origin realm looked forward to falling into a trap every moment. The fish has fallen into the net, come on. Those two guys were already overjoyed, immediately attacked Lam Fong from behind, loudly exclaiming two words, standing still without knowing what danger they would soon face. The people who really got caught here were those two idiots. Lam Fong smiled confidently, waiting for you guys for a long time. Those two guys stopped for a moment, still not believing what was happening before their eyes. How could he be a strong man in the original realm? Lam Fong jokingly said while performing the move, I only know now, it's too late. From Lam Fong's hand a sword appeared. Lam Fong held the sword firmly in the palm of his hand. Then used one foot to push hard on the ground to gain momentum and run quickly. Then his whole body jumped up and he swung his sword to attack the opponent. He swung his sword to attack the opponent. This attack used all his force, causing Lam Fong's hands to tremble. After finishing the trial, he slowly walked down the small alley. Old Tran had observed everything about the battle just now. 
Who would have thought that he would be able to escape the hands of two heavenly origin realm powerhouses? Having said that, old man Tran quickly ran away with his doubts unanswered. No way, Lao Law and Lao Lai are both strong men under the control of Wei Trung Tien, I have to go check to see what's going on. Seeing the appearance of the two of them before his eyes, Tran's eyes widened, filled with fear. They were lying on the ground, blood flowing everywhere. It's truly unbelievable, with a fatal blow, this kid's strength really can't be underestimated. Finally, Lam Fong returned safely. I had to use so much strength just now that my right hand was able to stand firmly. Even though it's already such a night, rubies are still waiting at Lam Fong's door. As soon as she saw Lam Fong, she immediately went out to greet him and worriedly asked, Your Highness, what's wrong with you? Ruby guided Lam Fong into the room. He told me not to say too much, to quickly help me inside and see if anyone was following me. She didn't know what was going on, so she had to do as the sixth young master told her. Ruby's face couldn't help but feel annoyed at this moment. Your Highness, is it someone from the Western Qin Empire who came to secretly attack you? These people really bully people too much. Lam Fong gently approached Ruby, then patted her head and spoke softly. It's okay, I've already taken care of that sneak attack. I just spent too much spiritual energy, resting for a day or two will be fine. Ruby felt somewhat reassured upon hearing such words. Yes, then your highness, please rest. Ruby will cook porridge and bring it to you. After saying that, she walked out of the room and gently closed the door. Lam Fong also lay down to rest a bit. Suddenly the system notification sounded a ding. Lam Fong happily jumped up, it was finally here. The notification system has four options and several reminders. The first option, drawing lots for all worlds, you can arbitrarily draw one thing from all the thousands of worlds. Second option, improve personal qualities, personal qualities will be doubled. Third option, super spirit treasure, draw, and receive a random spirit treasure. Fourth option, unlimited spirit stones, receive 100,000 top quality spirit stones at once. In addition, the system also provides reminders. Because you are the first to complete the quest, you are specially given an extra option. From now on, every time you complete 10 missions, you will receive one more option. After reading all the system's contents, Lam Fong was extremely happy. Why do you still have to ask, 100,000 top quality spirit stones? Lam Fong sat and thought for a moment. Lingxia is a specialized object used to absorb the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, and is one of the main currency units of the Chenyuan continent. Not only can it be used to practice, but you can also buy spiritual treasures, spiritual pets, spiritual pills or even spiritual skills. Spiritual stones are divided into four levels, low quality, middle quality, high quality and extreme quality. One middle quality spirit stone can be exchanged for 1000 low quality spirit stones, which is a sparkling silver spirit stone, then the round blue spirit stone. There is also a yellow diamond, then add more purple. Just thinking about this, there's nothing more satisfying than that. Lam Fong's joy is indescribable. My monthly allowance was only 200 mid-grade spirit stones. Now I have 100,000 top quality spirit stones. This is truly a godsend, a big win. After receiving it, the system will notify you again. Ding, congratulations on receiving 100,000 top quality spirit stones, because the quantity of spirit stones is so large, they are now stored in space in the system, you can take them out at any time. Lam Fong feels that the system seems to have human qualities, thank you. Lam Fong lay down and closed his eyes in satisfaction. Once I have this money, what should I buy first? Right in that dark night, there were two people standing in the city as if they were waiting for someone to return. The person waiting that night was the commander of the forbidden army named Puppet Trung Tien, who ordered the other two to kill Lam Fong. Trung Tien kept wondering, Old Lai and Old Law had been out for more than an hour, why hadn't they returned yet? The eunuch walked next to him, holding a cup of tea, trying to give comforting advice. General, don't be angry. Please drink a cup of tea every day. Suddenly a shadow appeared from afar. Trung Tien noticed it so he looked after it and loudly asked who it was. Elder Tran did not hesitate to appear and calmly said it was me. Trung Tien holds a cup of tea and sips. Old man Tran came to visit in the middle of the night, not knowing what was going on. Tran Lao immediately threw two burlap bags containing the bodies of Lao Lai and Lao Law. Trung Tien froze, not quite understanding. Old man, what is this? This is a person from our twelve squads, discovered in a small alley in the north of Thin Kin City. After reporting it to above, the great princess told me to bring the person to you. 
Trang Tien couldn't help but ask in panic, the great princess already knew. Old man Tran looked at Wei Trang Tien with sharp eyes and replied, yes, the eldest princess still paid close attention to the affairs of her husband and son-in-law. Seeing the incident as well as his plan revealed, Wei Trang Tien was extremely angry. The teacup in his hand was immediately broken. A bunch of trash, few successes, but many failures. After a while, Trang Tien regained his composure and gave orders to the eunuch. Go, convey the word to the duke's palace, let's just say that the prince from that country has caught the eye of the great princess, I am just a petty military commander, who dares to fight with eggs. Kick, let them do it themselves. The eunuch could only bow his head and obey, his people were killed twice like that, Trang Tien was truly heartless, his resentment grew bigger and bigger day by day. Lam Fong, don't think that by killing two people under my command, you can do whatever you want in this city. Just one duke's palace is enough to put you in big trouble. Suddenly the next morning, someone brought a lot of gold as well as expensive items to Lam Fong's palace. They placed it neatly on the ground and introduced themselves. I am the princess's butler. Recently, the princess has been busy with official matters and has not been able to personally welcome the sixth prince, so she specially sent this servant to visit and ask for your forgiveness. Lam Fong sighed with a helpless and tired expression, feeling that they really didn't know how to behave. This princess was really not sincere. Ruby is still diligently cleaning Lam Fong's hands. After thinking for a while, Lam Fong smiled and said, The butler is joking, the princess is a military commander, this person who is my husband is not a person who does not speak reason, I understand. However, your highness is coming to Thin Kin for the first time and is not yet familiar with the roads. I hope the butler can give you some pointers. The butler suddenly opened his eyes wide and asked, not knowing what his highness wanted to ask. Lam Fong conveniently threw a purple spirit stone to the butler, who quickly grabbed it. Lam Fong came closer and whispered in the butler's ear three words, Fa Mai Hon, which also means auction floor. The butler smiled confidently. It's easy, I will arrange it well. That night, a stream of people rushed to Kui Ting Pavilion. Stepping inside, there was a young girl with long hair who happily welcomed you to the Star Pavilion. It was my honor to preside over this auction for you. Lam Fong also arrived at Futing Pavilion, next to him was a short-haired girl accompanying him. The butler stood waiting and received him. Mr. Lam, this is a room we specially prepared for you. Your identity will be kept secret. You can enjoy it with peace of mind. I have arranged everything well. If you have any requests, please let me know. I will withdraw. Lam Fong is attentively reading what is written. She saw that so she said briefly. Sir, these are the ten types of treasures in this auction, please take a look, and so on, Lam Fong read the ten types of treasures mentioned above one by one, while reading, Lam Fong held his chin and thought. This tenth treasure is unclear at all, but dare to cost a thousand top-grade spirit stones. She pointed to the rules on the paper. Here are our auction rules, so you can expect more. But rest assured, the final treasure will not disappoint. The rules are so clear, but Lam Fong still complains, this makes Lam Fong a bit shy and embarrassed. The auction begins. Chun Ha gave a brief overview of the treasure. This is our first treasure, the fourth grade nine turn soul recovery elixir. As long as the injured person still has breath, using this elixir can quickly restore seven points of aura. The girl next to Lam Fong stepped out onto the railing to observe the situation below and then turned to ask Lam Fong. Sir, the auction for the first treasure has begun, do we need to bid? Lam Fong replied calmly, paying attention to help me with advanced spiritual skills. As for the other things, if you can buy them, buy them. Anyway, I'm not short of money. Hearing these words, she was extremely excited, like a kite in the wind. People started coming out with different prices, number 31 paid 15,000, number 42 pays 17,000. A fat woman picking her nose number 14 pays 21,000. Lam Fong raised three fingers and decisively agreed on the price of 30,000, many times higher than theirs. Her eyes towards Lam Fong were now filled with admiration. Yes, sir. Lam Fong also seems to like the current feeling of having money to do what he wants without worrying. Chun Ha announced in front of everyone that we just received the news that customer number 15 offered 30,000 top grade spirit stones. After hearing this news, everyone panicked. God, an increase of 9,000, as expected of a great person in a distinguished living room. Some people are extremely indignant, is this guy crazy, spending 30,000 to buy a four-grade elixir? As for the fat lady, she admires Lam Fong. When she sees him, she invites him to be his last name. Let's make friends, rich man, next comes the second item. She informed Lam Fong, young master, that this jade sword of the upper level was priced at 30,000 high-grade spirit stones. 
Lam Fong didn't think much and offered the price 50,000. Seeing that, she continued to ask, what about this low level, lower level, nine dragon, nine elephant art, which costs 35,000 top grade spirit stones? Lam Fong smiled slightly, 60,000. At this time, no one can surpass Lam Fong. Everyone was frozen, not daring to believe it was true. I'm so impressed, so much money. Everyone gasped in surprise. The distinguished guest number 15 offered such a high price, how could we follow suit? Besides that, there was also a person crying with both eyes in frustration. It was so inhumane. Paying 50,000 for just a broken sword would let another person live. At this time, someone knocked on Lam Fong's door. She immediately opened it and saw the housekeeper smelling incense. Hung Hung is an extremely beautiful person, especially compliment her. She did a great job, leave the rest to me. Hung Hung gently stood in front of the room door and introduced herself. Slave Hung Hung is the butler of the star block. The sixth prince is here. Why didn't you give me instructions first? Lam Fong didn't seem to be very interested in this. He propped his chin in one hand and held a cup of tea in the other. He slowly replied, as a prince from another country, I don't have much power in your western empire. Hung Hung slowly took out a card from her body. Your highness was joking. This is the noble membership card of the Star Pavilion. Please accept it. With this card, when auctioning treasures you can get a 20% discount. Moreover, a distinguished guest room can be prepared for you at any time with the most special treatment. We will send someone to bring the treasure you bought to your place. If your identity is revealed or lost, we will compensate. Since giving out that membership card, Lam Fong has been happier with Hung Hung, you did a great job. She also happily came to his side, the customer is king, that is the service purpose of the Star Pavilion. The eighth treasure to be auctioned now is a book of Earth Stage spiritual skills, although of high quality, only a portion remains. If your highness likes it, you can bid 70,000, the highest is 90,000. Lam Fong smiled lightly holding his membership card in his hand, filled with confidence. Don't say 90,000, even 900,000, you can still get it for me. Here I am Lam Fong, I'm not short of money. Hung Hung couldn't help but be surprised when she heard those last three words, it's really too much, your family produces spirit stones. Lam Fong asked Hung Hung to quickly tell the last treasure, this is making it difficult for me. She thought for a moment, oh, that's what you said, that is a divine beast egg that opens its origin. If you use the monk's blood to incubate it, when the egg hatches, you can form a contract between the monk and the divine beast. This will be a powerful help. Not long after, Tun Ha announced again, congratulating guest number 15 for giving away 100,000 top grade spirit stones, and for winning the eighth treasure, a part of the earth level spiritual skill book. The person present at the star pavilion could no longer control his anger and used his hand to hit the table very hard and obnoxiously. He blamed his second uncle. Second uncle, why don't you let me raise the price, the treasures have all been given to number 15, where is the dignity of our national palace? In the past, most of the treasures here were bought by us. If we didn't like them, we would give them to others. We never felt this sense of failure, the second uncle explained, number 15 is too mysterious, such lavish means of spending money do not seem to be normal people, we don't need to calculate with him, don't forget the purpose of our coming here. We have to get that spirit beast egg, this moment has finally come. Chun Ha was extremely excited, everyone, please bid for the last treasure of the night. That is the original Realm Spirit Beast Egg, the starting price is 1000 top quality spirit stones. Hearing this sky high price, everyone was talking. Still have those panicked expressions. This precious treasure is worth looking at just once. A thousand top grade spirit stones aren't enough to sell to me. I didn't expect it to be a spirit beast egg that opened its origin. Lam Fong leisurely ate the apple and asked for 5,000. Immediately there was a fight, I paid 6,000. Lam Fong continued to raise the price, 10,000. That guy didn't have any heart, raised the price to 12,000, and then his second uncle loudly stopped him. Pseudo origin, that's enough. Wei Yuan just looked at his second uncle and said we have to raise the price, the treasure that dad gave me is about to be stolen by the bastard in room number 15. The second uncle gritted his teeth and frowned. Given the price, do you think we can still get 10,000 top grade spirit stones? Since the position of reserve army was suppressed by the girl Song Yun Ling, do you think our national palace can still touch the national treasury? We no longer have the strength to compare prices with each other. When he heard this news, his hands clenched tightly. Damn, who the hell is in room number 15? There was no one else who could offer a higher price. 
Chun Ha announced her congratulations to distinguished guest number 15 for getting this spirit beast egg for 100,000 top quality spirit stones. Hung Hung was also smiling from ear to ear, congratulating your highness on winning the treasure you bought. We will choose a day to bring it to your palace, and then, Lam Fong gave Hung Hung a piece of paper, he said there was no need to deliver it to the palace, you just need to deliver it to this place. Yes, your highness, looking at that piece of paper, Hung Hung immediately asked if this was an abandoned temple in the western suburbs. Yes, you just need to bring the items here, and when the time comes, I will pick them up myself. The auction ended, Lam Fong and Hung Hung walked out of the room, and at this time the butler also arrived. Mr. Lam, you are indeed rich. This is the first time I've seen an auction like this, Lam Fong smiled lightly and cleverly reminded. Of course you have to get the things you want. Today's matter, please don't mention it to the butler. The butler happily smiled and replied, sure, I won't reveal it. At the same time, Wei Yuan appeared nearby with an unpleasant expression. Isn't this the sixth prince of Nam So? The two sides encountered each other, but he kept uttering words that belittled Lam Fong's status. Does a son-in-law even have the right to come here? The star standards for choosing people are getting lower and lower. The butler whispered in Lam Fong's ear, This is Wei Yuan, the son of Tai Tan's puppet state. The middle-aged man next to him is Wei Yang Lai, Wei's younger brother, the old man followed by the old evil, has reached to the realm of the five levels of heaven and earth. After briefly talking about their family background, the butler answered Wei Yuan. Mr. Wei, the sixth prince is the princess's fiancé, please be careful. Wei Yuan was angry, pointed straight at Lam Fong's face and shouted loudly. What is a princess's housekeeper like you? My little master is in an extremely unpleasant mood today, please don't bother me. Having said that, he attacked the butler, one hand tightly holding the butler's hand, the other hand raised a fist as a warning. Your dog slave still doesn't want to get rid of this trash. Faced with such harsh words and actions that threatened me, I couldn't help but panic. Seeing that, Lam Fong immediately used his inherent strength to give Wei Yuan a slap in the face. Wei Yang Li gritted his teeth, seemingly wanting to rush forward and fight back. But the evil old man put his hand on Duong Liat's shoulder, then signaled to Yang to be quiet and not to protest. Duong Liat could only watch Wei Yuan being bullied by others without being able to do anything. That slap made Wei Yuan more and more angry. You hit me, you trash hit me. Lam Fong had no respect for anyone and continued to slap him once more then calmly said yes, I want to hit you. Wei Yuan hugged his face in pain on the floor, he was so angry that his eyes widened, then shouted, drawing his sword and demanding to kill Lam Fong. Immediately, Wei Yuan used his strength to swing a sword and slash down. As soon as his attack was launched, Lam Fong was able to easily dodge it. The tip of Wei Yuan's sword can only strike the ground. He began to be extremely scared, and at the same time, Lam Fong's eyes flashed with murderous intent. Right after that, Lam Fong also launched a surprise attack towards Wei Yuan. But as soon as this palm was released, a hand quickly grabbed Lam Fong's hand. The one who stopped it was none other than the evil old man. He spoke softly, lowered his ego, please forgive me, my lord knows he is wrong, please raise your highness and hit him gently. Wei Yang Liat helped Wei Yuan stand up, but his mouth still kept cursing and trashing you. Duong Liat shouted loudly and told him enough was enough. Lam Fong waved the old man's hand and asked in return, so, why do I see that your young master still doesn't seem to be completely convinced? The evil old man could only laugh, trying to defend Wei Yuan, your highness, you saw wrong. Lam Fong at this time also does not want to agree with petty people. Before leaving, he gave a few words of advice, in the future, take good care of your young master's mouth, otherwise it could easily lead to disaster. Old Evil and Duong Liat bowed their heads, your highness teaches righteousness, we will say goodbye. Until the last moment, Wei Yuan was unconvinced, the resentment in Wei Yuan's heart only increased but could not be alleviated, damn it. Send me away after Lam Fong, thank you your highness for helping me. Today's actions of the Duke's palace are too harsh, I will definitely go back to report to the princess and pay you justice. But for Lam Fong, this is just a small matter, so there is no need to bother the princess. I don't expect the princess to be able to get justice for me. That night, it was getting late, there was a carriage in front of the palace waiting to pick people up. That was the puppet family's carriage. Wei Yuan kept talking, second uncle, why did you stop me from killing that trash? Duong Liat frowned, his eyes filled with murderous intent. That's enough, isn't it enough to lose face? You're usually stubborn, but now you're humiliated by a trash prince. It's truly defaming the duchy. If I and the evil old man hadn't acted in time, you would have long been the laughingstock of others. 
Wei Yuan can now only listen to curses and cannot respond anymore. The evil old man stroked his beard and said, it seems the rumors were true, the strength of that sixth prince Lam Fong has gone from level 5 tempering to level 2 heaven origin. This person is truly strange. Thanks to that, Duong Liat thought, it seems, our plan must be a little earlier. The next morning, the sky was clear blue with flocks of birds flying around, the atmosphere was very resentful. Lam Fong leisurely walked and thought back about yesterday. Last night's auction didn't have the magic and medicine suitable for rubies. Let's see if we can find it in the store today. As soon as he finished speaking, a shop appeared in front of him. Lam Fong lifted the curtain and asked, is there anyone? Lam Fong's scream made everything scatter everywhere. Turns out it was thrown up by the shop owner. He used his hands to hold onto the edge to sit up. Um, someone. Shouted loudly, startling the old man. Lam Fong is afraid to ask, old man, are you okay? He said softly, it's okay. It's the first time so that's it, what do you want to buy? I want to buy some introductory mental magic specifically for female monks, and some pills to enhance strength. The old man stroked his long, neatly braided beard. Did the nun use it? Let me find out. And then, he took a rather thick book from the shelf. Not just one but many, besides there are also two medicine bottles placed above. Lam Fong picked up a book that was not very intact, the old pages were all torn. Old man, are you sure this can still be used? He hugged all of those things back then grimaced and said, take it if you need it, if not, don't. This action made Lam Fong a little panicked. After that, Lam Fong still decided to take it. I take it, I take it all. The old man smiled faintly and raised a finger, indicating that he had finished one top quality spirit stone, without any decrease. Hearing such a high price, Lam Fong couldn't help but be surprised. How much? Normally this is only a few hundred mid-grade spirit stones, but now you ask me for a top-grade spirit stone, I won't buy it anymore. Why don't you steal it too? Lam Fong was stunned for a long time, then glanced at him and told him to close the shop immediately. The shop owner looked serious, filled with murderous intent and full of defiance. Kid, this is my shop, I don't like to sell at normal prices, okay? Lam Fong smiled faintly. The market price of this type of item is only a few hundred, people like this would kill me, senior. Hearing that, he seemed to implicitly understand the problem. Your voice sounds like you're coming from the south, you're all compatriots, so why would I trick you? This price is absolutely correct, Lam Fong secretly thought, this old man's cultivation level is unpredictable, unpredictable, as usual, he is probably a hidden master, just a top quality spirit stone, there is no need to conflict with him. Having said that, Lam Fong immediately took out a purple spirit stone and placed it on the table. He quickly took it in his hand with a cheerful expression, his expression was not bad, my last name is common, if you have any problems in the future, just come to me. Lam Fong took his things and turned away, suddenly he hurriedly said, wait, young man. He looked around to see if there was anything wrong with his senior. At this time, a jade ring was launched towards Lam Fong. You can easily capture it. The old man smiled and said, they are all compatriots, consider it a gift to you. Lam Fong took it without saying another word. Walked out of the store, Lam Fong took his frustration out, complaining as he walked, if I come to your shop again, I'll be a dog. Suddenly, in front there was a crowd of people, inside there was a ruby being bullied by them. Let me go. Inside is a ruby that is being bullied by them. Let me go. In the blink of an eye, Lam Fong had moved. He used his inherent ability to leave the ground and fly up high. This action made them extremely panicked. They couldn't help but wonder, what are you doing, you bastard? After that, Lam Fong used a palm strike to attack them and sent them flying away. Even rubies are surprised, sir. That fight happened, so no one dared to bully her anymore but politely stood and reported it. This girl broke my sparkling nine-turn bracelet. There was no compensation, so a little conflict broke out. Of course, the servant's actions were a bit rough and he offended the beauty. I apologize on his behalf. Ruby leaned against Lam Fong's body, always denying, no, I don't have it, he ruined it himself. Lam Fong hugged her and said a word of comfort, rest assured, I'm here. That guy stepped forward and took the initiative to introduce himself. At the Green Tiger Prosperity Chamber of Commerce, I don't know who you are. The two sides came to shake hands, but their eyes were filled with murderous intent. Lam Fong replied with a firm and decisive voice, the sixth prince of Nam So, Lam Fong. Luke Tiger looked at Lam Fong and thought, this trash prince is living with his son-in-law, no wonder he looks strange, but his skills just now seem to be not simple, let's try him a bit. Having said that, Luke Tiger held Lam Fong's hand tighter and tighter. This made Lam Fong quite surprised, his eyes widened, his eyebrows frowned. The two sides continued to compete by using force to hold each other's hands. In the end, the green tiger couldn't resist anymore, he gritted his teeth and endured it, sweating. 
Then when he let go, his hand seemed to lose feeling, and he screamed loudly in pain. On the contrary, Lam Fong pretended that nothing happened. He and that girl witnessed the pain of the green tiger. He also admired it a bit and said softly, His Highness's cultivation level is really profound. Lam Fong just humbly laughed it off, It was nothing, it was sixth brother, after all it was our fault, the spirit stone in sixth brother's chest was considered compensation. At this moment, the green tiger looked at his chest and realized that there was indeed a spirit stone. He didn't know when the spirit stone appeared here, so he was extremely surprised. After the matter was resolved, Lam Fong and Ruby left. Luke Tiger's subordinates are a bit heartless. Young master, just let them go like that. He raised his hand to signal them not to say anything more. As expected, rumors are just rumors, they can't be considered true. If you walk on the street in the future, your eyes will be a little brighter, otherwise people will kill you for no reason, the Luke family won't pick up your corpses for you. If we say no, we must blame them. They bowed their heads and listened. Lam Fong led the ruby back to his palace, kindly and gently comforted her, patting her head. It's okay, it's okay, I know it's not our ruby that's wrong. Ruby blushed obediently and replied, thanking your highness. Lam Fong suddenly couldn't resist her look, he was afraid to blush, he would die, so cute. After that, Ruby covered her mouth and coughed lightly. At the same time, Lam Fong took things from the basket, hey, look what gift I bought for you. She was extremely curious about the item that was about to appear. On the table appeared a series of things that Lam Fong had taken the trouble to buy at the store. She suddenly asked, Your Highness, what is this? Lam Fong smiled and replied, Ruby, from today, I will teach you to practice. Although she was a little happy, she was still self-conscious about her status. What about me, Your Highness, I'm just another servant, I don't have any qualifications. Lam Fong hugged her as if to comfort her and stop thinking too much, then spoke up, Ruby, I hope you know that you are a very important person to me. Those two eyes met so romantically and affectionately, she softly called out Your Highness. While the sunset was rising, strange sounds were heard in Lam Fong Palace, ah, 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 ah. It is emitted from rubies, she said with a tired tone and a suffering face, sweating profusely, Your Highness, so uncomfortable. Lam Fong coldly advised, Ruby, persevere a little longer, it will be over soon. Her ruby body now gathered, she closed her eyes and shouted loudly, Your Highness, I can't stand it anymore. But no matter what, Lam Fong continued to use his moves on her body. Ruby's entire body was wet with drops of sweat, and her smile gradually lost control. At this stage, perhaps nearing the completion of gathering power for the ruby, around her emitted streams of orange power like flames surrounding her. Lam Fong closed his eyes and calmly controlled his own strength. Then he breathed a sigh of relief. After completing it, Lam Fong smiled lightly and explained, the first time refining the body was a bit uncomfortable, it was necessary to let the spiritual energy run through all the meridians, eliminate impurities, regenerate bones, and cleanse the abnormality. Marrow, success, Ruby, you have now joined the practice and entered the great path. Suddenly, Lam Fong blushed, his mouth opened in surprise, his mouth kept saying oh oh. In front of him was the image of Ruby lying down with an extremely seductive appearance, gently calling her highness. Perhaps Lam Fong couldn't hold back anymore, his nose also bled, and he kept swallowing saliva. Look at her legs, then looked at that round bust again, then looked at her plump lips again. Lam Fong blushed more and more, Ruby, this, this we are a bit quick. Ruby sat up, calmly hugged her stomach and complained, your highness, I suddenly feel hungry. Originally, she did not think the way Lam Fong thought. Lam Fong smiled awkwardly, it turned out he was hungry. Ruby still didn't understand what Lam Fong meant, he asked again with a bewildered face. His highness just finished speaking quickly, Lam Fong went straight to open the door, tilted his head and said, Ruby, don't mind losing that, let's go, I'll take you to Thin Kin Dai restaurant for a delicious meal, the manager said Snow Mountain Spirit Fruit the highway there is especially famous. That afternoon, the two went to the restaurant. From inside the tavern, I heard the sound of Ruby saying she wanted to change her clothes. Lam Fong smiled lightly, don't rush, you'll be slow. The sound of firecrackers was very loud and bustling. In front of the restaurant, there was a very large sign that made us feel the grandeur of this place. From one angle, looking inside is the image of two people sitting next to each other enjoying a hot meal. Ruby felt very happy, she clapped her hands and smiled happily. Your Highness, I'm so full. Lam Fong also expressed his feelings after sipping the glass of wine in his hand, this spiritual path is indeed famous, the taste is very good, after drinking it, it can have some benefits for cultivation, rubies, you should try it quickly. Suddenly, there was a noise of arguing outside the room. Young master, young master, extracting stars really have someone. But that gentleman was stubborn and stubborn, shouting, get out of here. Extraction pavilion is Lao Tzu's permanent room, if anyone has to go away. Having said that, 
He directly used his foot to kick the door hard to rush in. A group of people walked in all arrogant and arrogant, we had to see who it was. Wei Yi Yuan was surprised to see Lam Fong. Is it you? Ruby was scared so she sat next to Lam Fong. He was not afraid and replied to him, he is your father. The old enemy made Wei Yuan unable to help but hate him. He held his fists ready and rushed towards Lam Fong, shouting loudly that he would kill Lam Fong. At this time, the brother accompanying him placed his hand on his shoulder, stopping him from acting rashly, then gently reminded, the first time we met, I didn't expect it to be in this awkward situation, Wei Yuan apologizes to you, sister-in-law. Lam Fong heard the two words sister-in-law and immediately thought, my wife is a great princess, she can address me like that. That brother is the eldest prince Tong Van Long. At this time, Lam Fong also recognized his position. It turned out to be the eldest prince, please sit down quickly. Don't stand there, that's rude. Tong Van Long also complied and slowly sat down. Lam Fong also politely poured water for him. Van Long held the glass full of water, his face feeling the flavor inside it. Snow Mountain Spirit Fruit, sister-in-law really knows how to enjoy it. Take a few sips and then gently place the glass on the table. And then the two of them started talking to each other. Lam Fong, coming to Qin country for many days, is there anything unfamiliar? Lam Fong confidently replied, thanks to the princess's blessing, all is well. Having the opportunity to meet, Van Long offered to ask Lam Fong. I heard that not long ago you and the Imperial Guard had a misunderstanding, right? Lam Fong sighed, it's true, some dogs are not obedient, of course they need a little training. As soon as he finished speaking, a foot stomped hard on the floor in anger. He said nervously, you are a man who comes to live with your son-in-law, come to Tai Chin, if you are not careful you will live, and even dare to kill the vice commander of the Imperial Guard, what kind of situation do you want my sister to fall into? Lam Fong observed and realized, huh, this guy is the younger brother of his half-hearted wife, and even defends her, so why is he with Tong Van Long in the same place? Lam Fong seriously replied, just because I came to Tai Chin, I had to let a few people know that I am not easy to bully. Here, we can only rely on our own fists, not like someone else. He screamed in boundless anger, so let me see if your fist is strong enough. Immediately, those two fists collided strongly with each other. This action causes objects on the dining table to be thrown away, and water also splashes on the table. Van Long coldly said, Van Fai, don't be so excited, it's not good to hurt Lam Fong, come down here quickly. After hearing Van Long say that, the two stopped fighting. But at this time, Lam Fong began to wonder, with the strength of Tian Nguyen level 5, an expert, but how could he collect his strength? Tong Van Long felt a bit embarrassed so he spoke up first. If something like this happened, I wouldn't dare bother you here again. After saying that, they turned around and left. The boy who had just fought with Lam Fong suddenly glanced at him. His mouth spoke politely, but his actions were extremely rude. He closed the door forcefully to shame Lam Fong. Lam Fong quickly sat down on the chair, raised his head and looked up at the ceiling, thinking to himself, the side effects of the blood howling demon sword are truly terrifying. If I don't need it in the future, I definitely won't use it. Seeing Lam Fong so absent-minded, Ruby worriedly ran over to ask. Your Highness, what's wrong with you? Are you injured? Ruby will now go buy medicine for you. Lam Fong leaned back and spoke in a tired voice. It's okay, Ruby, you don't need to worry, it's just a little exhausted, nothing to worry about, on the contrary, it's that guy. But seeing Lam Fong's current situation, Ruby did not believe what he said. No, your highness, your body is too weak now. You two keep arguing with each other, no, that's not me. Ruby insisted on forcing Lam Fong to drink, goji berries, yams, mulberries, and fifth family. Lam Fong kept crying and begging, please let me go, Miss Ruby. Right after the three of them left, Wei Yuan encountered two times and still couldn't do anything, so he got angry. Nguyen Long CA, just leave him like that. Didn't you say if you met? Not letting Wei Yuan finish his sentence, still doing the same thing, Van Long placed her hand on his shoulder. Nguyen brother, I had to assure Uncle Wei that your father would not cause trouble again, so I took you out. Wei Nguyen only found out about this, so he was quite surprised. Nguyen Long CA, you promised, here. Van Long frowned and said a few words of comfort, Nguyen brother, I guarantee, I will definitely help you take revenge on Lam Fong, but not now, we have to wait more time, believe me, Wei Yuan calmly replied, Nguyen Long brother, of course I trust you, we grew up together, every time we fight, you help me, don't worry, leave it to me, it won't be long, the scene here is dark and deserted with only one house with a green light, suddenly a rustling sound was heard in the bushes, turns out it was Lam Fong, he was waiting for an appointment with Hung Hung. It was so late that Lam Fong wondered why no one was coming. 
Remembering the conversation in the morning, Hing Hing held a piece of paper and asked, Is this an abandoned temple in the western suburbs? Lam Fong also happily replied without thinking much. Yes, you just need to bring your things there and I will personally pick them up. Suddenly, Lam Fong discovered something. I thought there would be murder and robbery like in the novel. It seems it was all fake, the person who climbed to a high position doesn't seem to be brainless. Lam Fong cried helplessly, knowing this already, it was better to stay at home and guide the little ruby to practice. And then he put his chin in his hand and thought, no way, no way, I'm the successor of socialism alone, the beautiful flower of the fatherland, a member of the young pioneer team who did good deeds and didn't leave a name. How could I continue every day? You use your worst thoughts to speculate about other people's inner thoughts and have to change and change. Suddenly, there was a very rapid rustling sound in the bushes. Lam Fong heard it and immediately asked who it was. Then a group of people appeared, each holding a sword. There was a man with a mask on his face and wearing a conical hat who said in a commanding voice, hand it over here so you don't die. Faced with this incident, someone asked worriedly, Lord Tien Ho, what should we do? We are less than 30 miles from the city gate. The previous battle may have alarmed the troops guarding the city gate, but even if reinforcements arrived, it would still take about a moment. Lord Tien who bravely decided that there was no other way but to risk his life. Ordered down, each person wore a bundle of cloth, then broke through the siege and ran towards the city gate. Everyone who heard that obeyed the order. Everyone tied cloth to their bodies as instructed. Right now is a confrontation between two different sides. That guy whispered in his mouth that they wanted to die. The strange man raised his hand and ordered his men to kill him, but not even one person was left. The scene at this time is very tense as both are facing life and death. Lord Tien who was extremely shaken but still mustered up the courage to shout, the generals and soldiers, for the sake of the emperor, kill. But still mustered up the courage to shout loudly, the generals and soldiers, for the sake of great frequency, kill. The two sides began to attack each other. Each person has a sword and a cloth bundle, constantly moving forward. The group of murderers and robbers kept saying not to try to escape. Condensing and flexibly using magical powers is a sign of highness. The sword kept rustling like that. That stranger used his poisoned hand to attack the heavenly protector, die for me. Tien Ho suddenly turned around and didn't have time to react, so he asked in surprise, what? That hand came closer and closer, making him only gasp, the sword fell to the ground with a rustling sound. Looking out from within the bushes, Lam Fong couldn't help but panic. Lam Fong's face froze, his eyes stared at the danger in front of him, sweating profusely, his eyes widened more and more. Oh God, it seemed. Both sides attacked to survive. Lam Fong was scared, getting into trouble and ah, uh, Lord Tien who tried to use his strength to run as fast as possible to attack the opponent. Unfortunately, that guy could easily dodge the attack towards the boss's back, followed by punching him hard in the chest. The hand holding the sword decisively slashed his back. Lord Tien who was not satisfied either, so he also took the sword and stabbed him in the stomach. At this time, his strength was exhausted, his subordinate saw that the situation at Lord Tien Protector was a bit bad, so they promptly came to help him finish off the enemy with a slash that split it in two. His subordinates were extremely worried, he could feel the look in his eyes, so he called out two times, Your Highness. Tien Ho knelt down and used his sword to resist. His subordinate came to his side, looked at the teacher and asked, Your Highness, is it something to worry about? His expression at this moment was a bit puzzled, Why did Lai Tien Ho call me Your Highness? Tien Ho is really the young man wearing a blue shirt. Tien Ho slowly explained, the first prince personally went to the southern town to greet the commander, but his highness also knew that he did not like to be treated specially by others if he knew that he was a member of the royal family. During this action, only I know your true identity. So also understood the problem, it turned out to be the eldest brother, no wonder, but it seems that today, you and I may have a hard time escaping. Suddenly, Lai Tien Ho's voice was cold, he looked at the lord seriously and said, Your Highness, please forgive me for speaking frankly, soldiers can die, twelve criminals can die, I can also die, but I hope your Highness will protect me. Important, there must be no errors. The man's face was still able to smile even though he was injured, so injured that he vomited blood, blood flowing from his mouth, and answered softly. Lai Tien Ho, don't worry, I will definitely try my best. After that, there was a force like a wind blowing through the two of them, and the heavenly guardians began to be alert. Indeed, a guy appeared and was attacking them. Tien Ho frowned, his eyes glanced at him indignantly, boldly, and then, he used the force to jump up to gain strength to slash down. That sword slash cut the opponent's hand, but it seemed to have no effect. The two sides were still in a fighting stance, determining victory or defeat, Tien Ho felt surprised when he did not react. Van Phi saw that so she rushed out and used her sword to slash him again. This guy seems to have extraordinary martial arts skills, he easily dodged that attack, and countered with a kick to the Van Phi. This caused him to fall on the ground. 
Tien Ho was angry when he dared to injure his master, so he screamed fiercely, I will risk it with you, die, then continue to hold the sword and slash from above. The enemy does not stand still but quickly moves. This time, the opponent did not strike lightly anymore, his hands gathered strength with lightning flashes of purple. Power is accumulated in a circle. He used it to hit the heavenly household, making him unable to react in time, pain was clearly visible on his face. Tien Protector shouted in vain. Van Phi observed and could not help but be surprised. Tien Thu was thrown far away by a blow. He didn't understand why he was able to exert strength again, his whole body now had no scars. Looking at that guy's murderous aura, the power seemed to spread throughout his whole body. Lam Fong hid in the bushes and observed the entire battle between the two sides. Lam Fong was extremely scared, this was still an empty person, he didn't expect to be able to send someone flying in such a situation. That guy's killer eyes began to rise. His feet stomped hard on the ground to gain momentum to run quickly. He plans to strike again to destroy Tien Protector and Van Phi. Lam Fong feels bad, this little uncle is in danger. In such an emergency, he was wondering whether to save or not to save. After saving, he was not sure if he could fight back. Ah, ah da, what to do, what to do. Suddenly, the spiritual treasure sword appeared and flew towards Lam Fong. Lam Fong was extremely surprised when he saw it. Then he gritted his teeth and said no, no, I don't use it, I don't use it, I don't want to be a real man for three seconds, I don't want it. The danger was getting closer and closer, the speed at which that guy was approaching the two of them. Seeing that, Lam Fong decided to take the spiritual treasure sword. Just like that, I could see Lam Fong's flashiness, his extremely serious and determined expression. After that, he ran out with all his might to stop the other guy's attack. Concubine Van couldn't resist at this moment. Speechless, I, the enemy's terrifying eyes glared at him. Lam Fong rushed out, jumped up and kicked the enemy. His attack surprised Van Phi as well as Tien Ho. Lam Fong was determined to finish him off. Immediately, he was attacked by that spiritual sword. Van Phi was extremely surprised when she saw Lam Fong appear. I was even more surprised to see that Lam Fong could quickly send his opponent flying. After that, Van Phi asked, Lam Fong, why did you appear here? Lam Fong calmly replied, do you think I want it? What is the reason? Let's talk later, this matter is more urgent. After a while, the other guy stood up, put strength in his hand and aimed at them. Van Phi saw that the situation was not good. Lam Fong, run away quickly, he is a wind mirror monk, he is not something you and I can deal with, take this with you and go. Then Van Phi reached into her shirt and took out something. Then Van Phi reached into her shirt and took out something. Phi Van Phi slowly gave the item to Lam Fong. He took it in his hand but still kept alert, he knew that the other guy was coming. As he got closer and closer to the two of them, Lam Fong still stood majestically without any fear, on the contrary Van Phi panicked, nervous and sweating. The man in black's hand contained a stream of black mist that hit the two people, but Lam Fong promptly dodged the killer move. His eyes flashed a scary light. I will take one of your hands first, followed by a straight slash towards the black-clad man's arm. Only saw a flash of yellow light. The black-clad man's arm flew straight into the air. Standing in front of Lam Fong, the man in black could only hold his severed arm and tremble, but a certain action of the man in black surprised Lai Tien Ho. His arm can grow again. This made Lam Fong surprised, to the point of saying, what? Seeing their surprise, the man in black gave a sinister smile. From one surprise to another, it seemed like something was wrong before our eyes. Lam Fong saw the man in black attack again, so he quickly used the magic move to jump back to avoid it in time. Friction feet cling to the ground to resist. Lam Fong's face turned pale, he couldn't believe what was happening before his eyes. I didn't expect to be able to regenerate. What is this? Luckily, I have been cultivating the divine movement technique for the past few days, otherwise I would have been tricked. Only then did Lam Fong remember that he was dead, forgetting that concubine Tong Van was still there. In front of Van Phi and Tien Ho was a man in black who was planning to take action. His mouth kept muttering, kill you, kill you, complete the mission. Lam Fong gradually felt confused, strange, he didn't care about Song Van Phi at all, his speech was also stuttering, was it because his mind was not good, he had a different regeneration speed and an aerodynamic realm but very little use of Qigong, just using full force. In the end, Lam Fawn decided to give it a try, fight quickly and win quickly. Otherwise, if you don't wait until his accomplices arrive, it won't be easy to solve. With my current cultivation level, I can't use it many times. Suddenly, the man in black stopped and said the word death, then fell down with a bang. Lam Fawn didn't understand anything for a moment. That fall shook the whole forest. That made everyone fighting the war fly away. Only that man in black could stand firmly on the ground. He tensed up his internal strength, leaves flying in the air, 
shouted loudly, where? At this moment, a gust of wind passed before his eyes. Lam Fong quickly walked sideways. No matter how fast it is, this speed is still grasped by him. His hand almost touched Lam Fong's face, but luckily he was able to dodge it. Lam Fong used his hands to support himself. The man in black jumped up and attacked Lam Fong. He was still in a position with his hands on the ground, not having time to stand up. As soon as he landed, Lam Fong disappeared in an instant. Lam Fong used all his strength to run as fast as possible. The lightning speed made it impossible for the man in black to control it. That final blow flew straight into the cliff, causing the cliff to explode, leaving only Lam Fong standing tall and the spiritual treasure sword. Lam Fong just ran as fast as he could to continue fighting. The challenge of overcoming levels is inevitable for the main character, but the two sides fought each other endlessly with no end in sight. Once again, Lam Fong jumped high to use his sword to finish him off. That sword decisively sent the man in black flying. Lam Fong firmly grasped the sword with absolute determination. Lam Fong's bloody and determined face was clearly visible. No matter what you are, this sword will turn you into ashes, Lam Fong said and turned his sword towards him. The tip of the sword is getting closer and closer. The tip of the sword lightly touched the man in black, this made him widen his eyes in surprise. This time, the man in black was thrown far away by Lam Fong's blow, sparks seemed to erupt around him. The speed was unexpectedly far, the fire was even stronger. Lam Fong's attack just now made that black-clothed man fly so fast that he burst into flames. Van Fai and Tien who stood below, looking up at him, then heard a loud noise. No matter how fiercely the subordinates of both sides were fighting each other, they had to stop in the face of this situation. Flying at a fast speed, suddenly the man in black flew past, making the young man extremely surprised. At the same time, an arrow from afar stabbed directly at the man in black. A group of soldiers on horseback rushed forward. I am the commander of the cavalry king Tong Vu. The traitors have not yet been tied up. Tong Vu seriously shouted one word, kill. While riding a horse and holding a spear, he rushed into the enemy team, each person was defeated by the enemy. At the same time, Van Phi only paid attention to Lam Fong, so she kept calling his name. Seeing Lam Fong just sitting still without speaking or reacting, his body kept radiating yellow light, this made Van Phi even more worried. Lam Fong, are you okay? Van Phi came closer to Lam Fong to see what was going on, but he had a sullen face and muttered complaints. No, it's not over, not even a little bit is left. Because he had consumed too much energy, Lam Fong seemed to be deformed into a young old man. He tilted his head and said softly. Ah, it's a little uncle, you, wait a moment, I will come and help you. Van Phi thinks it's better for me to help you. The sound of horses running on the ground was getting closer and closer to them. Tong Vu said hello, Van Phi, are you okay? Tong Vu, I didn't expect you to personally bring troops to rescue me. After all, Van Phi is still somewhat conscious, but Lam Fong can no longer resist anymore, his mind is also dizzy. Tong Vu replied gently. When the eldest prince heard that people were being attacked, he immediately told me to bring people over. He did not expect that there was an ambush near the city gate. This group of traitors is not simple. While they were still talking leisurely, thinking everything had been resolved, a man in black suddenly emitted a purple light. That purple color appeared more and more clearly, as if it wanted to explode with power. The man in black's cloak spread out, then a purple ball appeared. Tong Vu felt like something bad was about to happen. Indeed, that purple black power was shooting towards the three of them. Tong Vu shouted loudly, his highness quickly dodged. Fai Van Fai didn't understand for a while and was surprised. After finishing speaking, Tong Vu took his spear and rode his horse forward. He swung a spear, a stream of green energy surrounded the spear in his hand, then continued straight towards that black and purple tornado. Suddenly, the person controlling the purple tornado gave a dark smile, ha ha, Tong Vu's spear tip was now just a few inches away from the tornado. From within the tornado a hand slowly reached out, with just one finger confronting the sharp spear. Tong Vu's spear was immediately blown away into smoke. Tong Vu widened his eyes, seemingly unable to believe it. The power of this blow caused Tong Vu to bounce off the horse's back. His eyes turned white, his whole body lost consciousness. At that moment, a young man with long yellow hair appeared, naked, closing his eyes and concentrating on controlling his ability. Fai Van Fai was still supporting Lam Fong when he saw this scene. He used his hand to gently stroke the remaining blood on the corner of his mouth. The young man's feet were gently placed on the ground, terrifying eyes with angry red irises of hatred. And then, his whole body appeared, surrounded by dazzling golden light. He slowly walked towards Van Fai and Lam Fong. And then he observed his body, looked around, wondering if this was another world. Van Fai saw that and asked, who are you? His irises were still bright red, his eyes widened. After hearing Fai Van's question, he flew into space, and the leaves outside also flew with the wind. He flew up at a high altitude so he could easily observe everything from that angle. Are these people from another world? 
They're really not like us. Suddenly, a sound passed through his ears. He regrouped and listened attentively. Hum. So what? The plan has failed. Let's carry out the divine power transfer first. Um, I know, he said as he rushed towards Van Fai and Lam Fong. Even though I'm very curious, time is limited. Next time I find out, just get the things first. The speed he approached was extremely fast, giving it to me. Van Fai and Lam Fong were unable to resist. He took things from Lam Fong's body. In his hand he was currently holding a relic of some kind. When he got what he wanted, he also became more arrogant. Well, I already have the divine power relic, now, I just need to wait for him to come. Van Fai was extremely surprised to look at Lam Fong. What relics of the southern heavenly kingdom? At the same time, he discovered that there was a person looming behind him. Turns out he's an old man, his voice is tense and heavy, go away. But he happily turned around and said, I was waiting for you, huh? I didn't expect it to be the power of a god, how interesting. He came closer and grabbed his entire face with his hands, then draw a few moves on him. The tactic gradually took shape. Finally it appeared like a space mirror, inside like a universe full of stars. Van Fai and Lam Fong just watched the two of them enter that universe, then gradually dissolves into the air. The two of them suddenly came with big round eyes. That strange thing shot straight up into the sky, then made a rustling sound. Lam Fong and Van Fai observed and saw that the old man was trying to drag him into that space hole. The two sides struggled, he grabbed him by the neck. At this moment, he already knew that he had lost, but it didn't matter, after all the goal had been achieved, it was up to you, how long could you protect this world? How will you deal with it when we arrive? He angrily asked, how did you discover this place? Before his whole body gradually disappeared, he smiled faintly and answered. I have to admit that you did a great job, able to hide the Primeval world so well. If it weren't for the scrap metal machines taking the initiative to tell me, we would have been fooled by you forever. He frowned and thought, is it the southern kingdom? Ah, since you guys might call it by this name, I hope you will destroy that bunch of scrap metal, to avoid having to divide a part of the land when you take over this place. His expression became more and more serious, provocatively asking, do you think you can succeed? He gave a contemptuous smile again, who do you think you are? Just a doorman, not even a god. This time it is because you are here, my true body is not, this time will be the day of your death. In an instant, he disappeared. After that, his eyes looked at everyone again extremely sharp. Looking at that look, everyone was a bit scared, plus the fact that the other guy had disappeared made them even more surprised. He slowly observed below from a high angle, then conveniently use your hand to gently swipe downwards. Green slashes crashed down around them, making it impossible for them to dodge in time. A moment later, everyone was stunned, as if those things were poisonous or anesthetic. At this time, Lam Fong woke up after a long coma. He asked Van Fai why I was here. Van Fai's voice trembled, to save me. Lam Fong calmly stood up and turned away. I have saved him, can I go now? But Van Fai still wants to hold you back, don't try to leave. Van Fai rushed to hug Lam Fong from behind. Lam Fong shouted, hey hey, let go, quickly let go. Hey hey, little uncle, little beast. Van Fai begged endlessly. Brother-in-law, don't go, let's face it together, I'm scared alone, after I return I will speak well of you in front of my sister. However, Lam Fong didn't need it, he just hoped Van Fai would release him quickly. He ran all over the forest, while Van Fai constantly followed, refusing to let go of his hand, determined not to let go. After running for a while, the old man appeared in front of them, causing them to stop. He spoke up and coughed a few times, then slowly stroke my long beard, not you. The two of them also stood seriously, senior. Suddenly, he used a finger to point at the cloud, and a blue light appeared in a circle. Immediately, Van Fai fell down with a thud. He looked at Lam Fong with eyes full of intrigue. Seeing that, Lam Fong asked directly what he wanted. Why, do you still want me to hold your hand? Lam Fong softened his voice, bowed his head, apologized to Senior. I was wrong, if there's anything, just say it. He softly praised him for being a bit intelligent. Now is not the time to chat with you. I will only say one sentence, remember. Definitely come to Dong Lam Ton. Lam Fong was a little surprised and thought to himself, why did he come to Dong Lam Citadel? Where is that? What did your senior say? Even though he didn't know, he still agreed. Um, senior, don't worry, I'll definitely go. As soon as he finished speaking, he turned away and smiled slightly. It's up to you to go or not. What happened here today, except you, no one remembers the appearance of that young man, Lam Fong. You are special. Lam Fong was surprised. What did his senior mean by this? He already knew that Lam Fong was not from this world. Lam Fong was surprised when he said this. Having said that, he disappeared immediately without saying another word. He frowned in worry, his heart pounding. Then he also fell down with a crash. My eyes gradually closed, unable to open anymore. 
But my mind still tries to wonder, why do you know? My eyes were almost closed when a group of people arrived. Quick, where are you? At this time, the sun shined brightly throughout the forest. That green tornado flew into the housing area. The old man immediately appeared. He coughed a few times, then slowly take off your clothes. That treasure was firmly attached to his body. At this point, I realized I was being tricked. In Lam Fong's memory, he constantly thought about the old man's question, you are not from this world, right? Suddenly, Lam Fong's eyes widened. Then he sat up startled, but his expression was extremely surprised. Seeing that, Lam Fong immediately asked where I was. At the same time, Ruby walked up to his head with both hands. Then he gently pressed Lam Fong's face to his chest, making him blush with embarrassment. Ruby said softly, young master, didn't you say you were going to buy things? Suddenly you fell into a coma, were taken back by the soldiers, and slept for one day and one night, making me worry to death. Lam Fong's face seemed to be enjoying himself, his mouth was also drooling. As soon as he finished speaking, Lam Fong did not expect that he had been in a coma for one day and one night. Ruby innocently added, the doctor said that your vitality and blood were damaged, and I also made medicine for you. After saying that, Ruby turned away. Lam Fong held her back, no, Ruby wait. She took out a bowl of purple medicine that had been prepared and told him to drink it quickly. When Lam Fong saw it, his face turned pale. He hid in a corner of the room continuously explaining. Ruby, listen to me, this is not damage to blood and energy, this is a sequela after the battle, I am now a level 8 Chen Yuan, ordinary medicinal herbs have no effect on me. We just need to meditate and practice to restore our vitality and blood. Don't come over here. However, she still smiled gently, still holding the cup of medicine in her hand, walking closer and closer to Lam Fong. I always say, Ruby, you have to listen to me. The sky at that time was extremely blue, the air was fresh, and flocks of birds flew around freely. Lam Fong alone had no strength left after being forced to drink that cup of medicine. He lay down, his eyes blank. Ruby looked at him and said, you're right, you're no longer a child. Every time I take medicine, I can't sit still. She slowly walked out of the room, but unfortunately tripped over the door wall. At this moment, the cup of medicine in my hand gradually fell, and I was about to fall. At the same time, a magical hand appeared to support her body. At the same time, he was able to hold the medicine cup in time, not letting it fall to the ground. The ruby stood unsteadily and collided with that person's body. She was a beautiful lady with a gentle, careful voice. Ruby quickly stood serious, shyly bowed her head, and was rude. Before the lady left, Ruby asked who she was. She walked into the room and saw Lam Fong lying on the bed. She didn't expect that you and I would meet in this situation, Lam Fong. Hearing this voice, Lam Fong was a bit surprised. He stood up and turned his head to look, Lam Fong, first time meeting, I am your wife Tong Van Lin. Lam Fong was confused and wondered, Tong Van Lin, why did she come here? She slowly sat down next to Lam Fong. His voice was cold, he frowned and asked, what are you doing here? Lam Fong, first I want to thank you for saving Van Phi, then I want to apologize, at first I didn't personally come to pick you up. On the one hand, it's because I'm busy with a lot of things. On the other hand, I actually underestimated you a bit. I didn't expect you to be attacked. I hope you can forgive me. Lam Fong thought for a while but still hadn't made a decision. Seeing that, she immediately added. I know you have resentment, I wanted to protect you, try not to let others pay attention to you. But I think of course, standing in this position, my enemy spares no effort to find all my weaknesses, even if it's you. Lam Fong doesn't want to hear any more explanations. Forget it, let it go, it's okay to say this clearly, and you haven't done anything to harm me. Killing the deputy commander of my imperial guard is also borrowing your reputation, otherwise a prince from another country would like me, how can we be safe and sound? She thoughtfully placed her hand on Lam Fong's cheek, looking at him affectionately. Lam Fong, thank you for understanding me, I will protect you from now on. This action made Lam Fong unable to help but blush, that arm gradually distanced itself from Lam Fong, and he kept thinking, what's going on, what's going on? Suddenly I feel protected and domineering like that. This is the temperament of a great princess. She smiled softly, you didn't expect to be embarrassed, it's so cute. Lam Fong coughed to calm down. Miss, what about you, being the successor may not be easy. It's okay, it's already difficult for a woman to work in court, and there are many brothers and sisters around her who are staring at her like a hungry tiger. She stood up, her long dress covering the ground, wearing a gilded fur suit, stand in a solemn and serious posture, and speak seriously. However, if we have sat in this position, we will not worry about difficulties and obstacles. If there are difficulties, we will find a way to solve them. Lam Fong also gradually understood the problem. To wear the crown, one must be able to bear its weight. She praised Lam Fong for speaking very well, that
that's exactly what it was. Lam Fong, I like you more and more. When the day I ascend the throne, I will definitely compensate you with a big wedding. So that people in the world will not dare to look down on you. Hearing this, Lam Fong felt a bit strange. Before she left, she didn't forget to give her instructions. You should pay attention to rest. After you recover, you can let Song Chi take you back to the capital. I have already sent him to your palace. Um, I know, you also pay attention to your health. With enough instructions, Van Lin left with peace of mind. Lam Fong felt interested in her appearance just now, he felt a bit of admiration, so cool. On a quiet night, a scream rang out from the room, ah. From inside the room, a servant with a frightened face quickly ran out. Following him was a hand reaching out. The other guy's mouth was immediately grabbed by that hand. With a terrifying speed, that servant was dragged back into the room. From outside, only a long blood stain could be seen on the door. That door was opened again. The person who stepped out this time was a great man carrying a large and long sword at his waist. He calmly wiped the blood stains on his hands. Then he glanced at the servant and ordered the servant to deal with the traces, light the fire, and burn the place down. The servant clasped his hands and obeyed. Immediately, the entire room was consumed by a fire. Not long after, only a bunch of ruins remained, and the soldiers also came to check. At the same time, Lam Fong also walked towards this place. He chewed something and wondered, um, is this place on fire? On the side of the road, an old woman is selling fresh meatballs, come and try them. Lam Fong immediately stepped forward, raised a finger and said, hey, hey, give me one. Lam Fong was still busy at the meatball counter, the shop owner even kindly reminded, okay, young master, please hold on tight. At this time, a strange guy appeared behind Lam Fong. The meatballs are greasy, colorful, and have a layer of honey and chocolate on top that looks very delicious and attractive. Lam Fong was extremely excited about it, wow, it doesn't look bad. He slowly opened his throat and slowly put the meatball vermicelli inside. Before I could bring him in, the guy who had just arrived gently patted my shoulder, hey, you are Lam Fong. As soon as he finished speaking, the meatball quickly fell to the ground. That guy still didn't know what was going on, so he kept talking, looking for you, standing up, and coming with me. On the contrary, Lam Fong was sitting down looking at the meatballs in sadness and regret, my meatballs. The boy began to frown, showing anger, saying in a loud voice, Hey, do you hear me? Get up quickly, the murderous look in Lam Fong's eyes emerged. Unable to control this anger, Lam Fong directly gave him a blow and shouted loudly, Wasting food is shameful, you bastard. After that blow, Lam Fong calmed down with a serious expression. That guy grimaced, used his hand to cover the wound he had just been attacked, and asked if you dare to hit me. Lam Fong just glanced at him without saying anything. After a while, Lam Fong asked back, Do you know who I am? Dare to come and arrest me, don't be stupid to be someone else's sword. He quickly replied that he knew, of course he knew, the Prince Nam so was married to here, Lam Fong, the one they wanted to capture was you. He placed his hand on the sword and slowly swung it out. Lam Fong immediately looked in the direction of his hand. In the end, Lam Fong was still taken away by them. Two of them held their swords on Lam Fong's neck so that he could not do anything for a while. At an angle looking down from the top of the winery, Van Long had observed all the situations just now, holding a cup of tea in his hand, thinking about a few things. They have released the Lam Fong to the city, then went to jail. The subordinate forcefully pushed Lam Fong inside. Lam Fong is calm no matter what situation he is in, outside there is constant gossip. Let's just leave him here like this, after all, he is the princess's person, wait for the government envoy to return to deal with it, let's go. Lam Fong raised his head high and sighed and lamented, I've only been at peace for a few days, what have I gotten myself into again, Van Lin, where are you? At the same time, a beautiful woman was also being detained. Lam Fong carefully observed that he was extremely angry, his teeth clenched tightly, on his face there was a scar across his eyes, his mouth slowly opened as if he wanted to say something, his eyebrows were also frowned, looking very angry. He rushed up to the Lam Fong prison door, screaming and asking what you were looking at, do you have an opinion? This is an energetic monk who respects you and does not bully you. He is willing to fight one on one in the same realm as you. You beat me to death, I absolutely do not blame you, I kill you, I will not care who is behind you, if you come to cause trouble with the little master, I will make you half dead. Lam Fong heard what he said and suddenly didn't understand anything, his face looked bewildered and confused, he still continues to provoke me, come and beat me, beat me to death. If you weren't held back by these guys, young master, I would have stomped on your dog face and returned home, not even your parents would recognize you. Seeing him keep talking, the prisoners quickly pushed him into the prison along with Lam Fong. Carefully lock the door. He also doesn't know why he locked me in this prison room. The prison guard turned around and smirked. I think you're like a crazy dog. You just taught the kid in there a bit. 
Don't say we didn't give you a chance. Inside, he was no longer as arrogant as before, shyly looking at Lam Fong. He kept sneaking glances in Lam Fong's direction, and at the same time he also looked over. Immediately, he pointed straight at Lam Fong and raised his voice, Kid, what are you looking at? Lam Fong looked calmly without any reaction. In the end, he just gave a forced smile. The rays of light from outside shined into each prison door. With that servant's arrogant and overbearing personality, Lam Fong decided to give him a full blow that made him groan in pain. His face was so swollen that his whole body could no longer move. After making the move, Lam Fong grabbed his wrist with one hand, looking at him and feeling it. His aerodynamics were extraordinary, he could withstand blows better than normal people. Now I want to ask you something, is there? Is that okay? He didn't dare to resist so he happily accepted. Okay, okay, just ask. Lam Fong started asking about his identity and what job you do. Why are you locked up here? The servant replied in a low voice, the poor man's name was strange, he lived in a prosperous capital, and usually made a living by writing. The villain drank too much yesterday and was lying on the street. Woke up and saw the person of the twelve punishments saying that last night the villain got drunk and set fire to someone else's house. They said it was a merchant's house, they were having a party to invite guests, but as a result, they were set on fire by villains and burned to death. Ju Wei said, but his eyes were extremely sad, then he immediately brought the villain here. The tone of voice now is not the same as in the beginning. Lam Fong put a finger on his chin to think, he felt something was wrong. I heard Tong Kai say that the function of the twelve sentences is to investigate, patrol and arrest. This type of case should not be assigned to the twelve sentences. Lam Fong asked Chu Wei again, was the arson really done by you? Chu Wei immediately protested, how could this be possible? If a poor person has the guts to do that, it's not enough to have to write for hire to make money. Lam Fong smiled lightly and told him to lie, when you first walked in you were very fierce, you almost scared someone to death. Chu Wei scratched his head and smiled shyly, then explained that a villain doesn't have to listen to others when he enters the prison and has to show a bit of ferocity to avoid being bullied by others. At this moment, the sound of three people's footsteps was getting closer and closer, then stopped in front of Lam Fong's prison and Chu Di. Lam Fong used cautious eyes to observe. The great man carrying the large and long sword from before appeared and called Lam Fong's name. Lam Fong's face couldn't help but be surprised. Damn, who are you? He wondered why he knew my name. Sir sternly instructed, I will only ask you to answer, no need to say anything else. As soon as he finished speaking, Lam Fong was also a bit surprised and bewildered. Then he got angry again, gritted his teeth and frowned, looking at him with indignant eyes. Lam Fong approached and grabbed the bars of the prison door tightly, this action definitely made a thud sound. Lam Fong used his strength to stretch the two bars of the door, making a cracking sound, then said in a strong voice, Who do you think you are? I'm only here because my wife sent Van Lin, I respect her, and was arrested here. Otherwise, do you think I will obediently raise my hands and be bound? The two subordinates accompanying the great man felt a bit dangerous so they quickly clanged their swords. The lord also slowly placed his hand on his sword, smiling in a sarcastic tone, it seems that if he doesn't let you suffer a little, you won't obediently obey. Suddenly, at this important moment, there was a voice from far away that sounded very powerful. Are you planning on making him suffer a little? Both his and Lam Fong's eyes turned towards that person, everyone was surprised. That is the appearance of Song Van Lin. She solemnly walked into the prison and asked in a cold voice, Lord Lai has brought her husband here without my permission, is he not keeping me in his sight? No matter how tense the situation was at that time, at first Lam Fong was quite happy when Van Lin arrived, his cheeks turned red. Lord Lai was extremely upset. His Highness, the officials responsible for supervision, called the forestry department to ask about the city gate being attacked a few days ago. At that moment, Venerable Van was standing next to Van Lin. After Dainan finished speaking, she immediately asked, Oh, is that so? Sir Van, have you heard that the twelve punishments were called Lam Fong? So when reports, Your Highness, I have not heard anything about the order, the commander may not have arrived yet. Van Lin's eyes gradually became sharper, Oh, is that so? Van Lin step by step gets closer to Dai Nan. She grabbed his neck, a fierce look on her face, Leith Wong Fu, you abused your power, what should you do? I am currently supervising the hundred officials on behalf of my father, or should I directly execute you on the spot? The strength of Van Lin's hand tightened more and more, gradually making Lord Lai unable to resist, his eyes widened and red veins appeared. On the contrary, Van Lin is very interested in this. If this situation continues like this, I'm afraid it won't be okay, it will actually kill a person's life. Luckily, a loud voice rang out, Your Highness, that's enough. Thanks to that, Van Lin let go. 
Uncle Wei reminds me of a few things, your highness, although your majesty has assigned you to supervise a hundred officials, you only have the right to supervise, not to punish. Hearing this familiar voice, Van Lin turned around and realized that Uncle Wei had arrived. Uncle Wei seriously taught, Van Lin, people who do big things can't just behave like that. Your father raised you to this position, there are many things that cannot be done as casually as before. Van Lin softly explained, I know, but they didn't follow the rules this time, so I did. Uncle Wei gently placed his hand on her shoulder, rest assured, if they don't follow the rules, they will automatically pay the price. Having said that, Uncle Wei turned to Master Lai. At this moment, he was obediently kneeling down, his hand still holding his neck from the pain he had just felt. Deep government, you have worked under my command for so many years, you automatically know my rules, are you ready? Lord Lai clasped his hands and admitted his guilt, and the government volunteered to accept the punishment. Uncle Wei immediately praised him very well. After that, Uncle Wei used his finger to point at Lord Lai. At this moment, that finger emitted red light. Suddenly, his eyes appeared very scary, his eyes turned red, his whole face was also red, as if he was in extreme pain. It turned out that every part of his body was being cracked and cracked by the puppet. After finishing punishing Mr. Lai, Uncle Wei glanced slightly at Van Lin and then spoke, Your Highness, you can take Lam Fong away. Van Lin smiled lightly and replied, Thank you very much this time, Uncle Wei, but that's it. Next time, even if I'm human, I won't be this easy. Van Lin said while smiling and narrowing her eyes. Uncle Wei could only laugh it off. Okay, okay, I know. The prison door was decisively opened with a click. Lam Fong stood tall inside, looking serious. Soon, without any dignity, he shouted out the name of Van Lin happily. Lam Fong burst into Van Lin's arms and pampered him. She also gently caressed his cheek. Idiot, aren't I here? Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Chu Chu standing behind saw the two of them being considerate to each other and immediately understood, no wonder they are not old, and their cultivation level is much higher than me, it turns out he is a clinger to his wife, a man's dignity is no longer needed. I spit. After that, Lam Fong returned to his original dignified state, saying solemnly, Van Lin, let's go. The two of them gradually left their feet, panicking for fear that they would abandon them in this dark prison. They quickly shouted, wait ah. Chu Wei ran to hug Lam Fong's legs, constantly begging and pleading. Sir, take me with you. That fire really wasn't started by me. If I stay here, I will definitely be forced to confess. Uncle Wei saw him dragging himself around like that and was not satisfied at all. He didn't have the slightest bit of masculine aura. At the same time, there was a flash of blue light, and the system suddenly displayed a question for Lam Fong to choose from. On the way to becoming a god, not only do you need strong strength, mental maturity is inevitable. Now please choose whether to save the character in front of you or not. Reward unknown, punishment unknown. In the end, Lam Fong decided to save Ju Wei. As soon as you choose to save, the system immediately tells you that the reward has been issued, and the epic story officially begins. Because of your wrong thinking, you can avoid death in the future, but your enemy cannot. Don't stop, investigate the truth about the arson, this mission is a mandatory mission, please carefully choose your next steps. After reading the recent announcements, Lam Fong was quite surprised, in his mind he kept wondering, is the story exciting, what development is this, and if I don't save Ju Wei, will he die? Looks like there really is a problem there. After that, Lam Fong whispered something in Van Lin's ear. Two of Lord Lai's subordinates felt dissatisfied and planned to go to Lam Fong, but Lord Lai grabbed his wrist to stop him then shook his head to signal not to be rude. Van Lin smiled lightly. Then she opened her mouth, if there was an injustice, then send it to the North Town Prefecture Department. Originally, the South Town Prefecture Office was not supposed to supervise and inspect internally. Are you right, Sir Van? Venerable Van clasped his hands and bowed his head, that was it. Chu was extremely touched when someone helped him, she shed tears and said thank you. Lord Lai's voice was weak, then Lord Van must suffer. Van Lin's sharp eyes looked at Master Lai once and said let's go. As he left, Lam Fong also glanced at him, muttering in his mouth, why is Li Shengfu? Lord Lai lowered his voice, but he was already very angry at this incident, calling Lam Fong's name with hateful eyes. They gradually walked out of the southern town Tai Palace, bowing to his highness. Unlike the atmosphere inside the prison, stepping outside is like enjoying fresh, fresh air. Uncle Wei is still inside interrogating Lord Lai. What have you been doing lately? He replied calmly, of course doing what was assigned. Uncle Wei turned his back and told him to handle it himself. After there was no one left in the prison, the two subordinates spoke up, Sir, that's strange. He angrily shouted fiercely and shut his mouth. You stubborn old man, even if you knew. So what? As for Lam Fong, an unorthodox prince would dare to interfere. Very well, I remember you well. 
Not long after that, Lam Fong and Van Lin returned to the palace. Van Lin suddenly took all the blame on herself, I'm sorry, Lam Fong, it's all my fault, they've attacked you so many times. Lam Fong did not blame him, but thought it was natural. People on the streets, there's nothing else we can do, Van Lin, not only you, it seems I also have to give up some unrealistic thoughts. If your enemies always think of me as a weakness, then let me officially step onto the stage and compete with them. On a clear day, at Kim Din Palace, where the eldest prince Tong Van Long lived, Lord Lai came to kneel in front of Van Long and reported the recent situation, the incident was like this, his subordinates did not do well, please blame his highness. Van Long was extremely angry when he heard this, his bloody hand was tightly pressed against his leg, trying to control his emotions. After that, I regained my composure and asked, how long has it been since you came to Thin Kin? He slowly raised his face and said softly, your highness, five years. Van Long tightly grasped the armrest of the chair, reprimanding with hidden meaning, five years, so this matter has passed for five years, no wonder you are also starting to relax. When the palace heard these words, they were extremely frightened and broke into sweat. He immediately bowed his head repeatedly, his subordinates deserved to die, and confessed his sins. Van Long proactively recounted the incident. Five years ago, you first came to Thin Kin. You had to be very careful about everything. You did everything yourself. Thanks to you, you were able to maintain a certain area of heaven. Emperor's feet. At the gate of the city, people from the southern kingdom attacked the envoys, but you did not notice. But, now the emperor has said that we must thoroughly investigate this matter, the twelve punishments are going all out, I told you to handle it from beginning to end lest anyone discover any traces. Van Long gradually couldn't control himself anymore, one hand bent the dragon's head on the chair, then he threw it straight towards the palace, constantly blaming him, but you told your subordinates to find random thugs to deal with it, so you didn't put your colleagues in your eyes. The world only knows that you are a smart person. That throw made him unable to kneel anymore. The force of his hand was quite strong, plus the dragon's head was quite hard, which led to the blood streaks on his face slowly dripping onto the floor. The expression of extreme fear on the face and the trembling voice of the secret palace were emitted. Your Highness rest assured, the officials have learned from the experience, the appearance of Ju Wei is truly my fault, but later the department will personally plan and give a reasonable answer to this matter. Van Long went down step by step. He went to the front of the palace. Van Long commanded, go, don't disappoint me. He shouted firmly and clearly. In another perspective, I don't know what Lam Fong or someone else said, but at the same time, Chu Di happily said yes, different from the terrifying oppression on Van Long's side. He stood seriously, his hands behind his back, his legs standing in a V shape, his mouth always smiling. Lam Fong seriously asked him an affirmative question, do you want to follow me? Yes, the old master accepts the villain, the villain is willing to jump into hot water for the master, even if he dies, he won't give up. After hearing this, Lam Fong turned away but still smiled and said, stop bragging, can you even believe what you say, just wait here for now. He was worried that he wouldn't be accepted, but he still listened to Lam Fong's words, yes, ah. At this time, the cloud spirit appeared calling Lam Fong's name. Lam Fong immediately ran happily like a child, ah Van Lin, it's me. Normally, Lam Fong is extremely serious, but whenever Van Lin is present, he seems to become a different person. This makes Chu Wei quite surprised, wow, I really admire him. Van Lin came to tell Lam Fong the good news, I already told Mr. Van, from today onwards you will accept the position in the twelfth sentence. When it comes to big matters, no one can be as mature as Lam Fong. He asked in a cold voice, is it convenient to do this? Van Lin is very confident in this matter. Of course, you haven't been here long, and you still don't understand the function of the twelve forms. The twelve forms are taken from the twelve earth branches, divided into upper six forms and lower six forms. Thuong Luke is in charge of monitoring the entire Dai Qin territory. Xie Sixie is in charge of gathering intelligence outside the territory of the Great Qin, and Twelve Fishing Xie is directly responsible to the Emperor. The upper six shapes in Thin Kin are the TSUU Gradually Mao Tianjie, divided into North and South Town Office. Tai Suu Dan Tam Hin is the back town government office. In charge of supervising the hundred mandarins. Mao Minute Je is the southern town government office, in charge of patrolling and arresting, and the two sides restrain and cooperate with each other. But because of the court's arrest two days ago, father was angry and ordered us to investigate this matter. That's why I just put you in prison to help me investigate this matter, otherwise I wouldn't be able to order them. After hearing this, Lam Fong immediately said, if you weren't the successor, I would have believed this, ha ha. Van Lin smiled shyly, just joking, but that's it. Lam Fong, don't disappoint me. Just now she was shy, but in an instant she changed her expression. Lam Fong smiled confidently, just leave it to me. 
Van Lin asked someone to bring a stack of different books with many different contents to Lam Fong and Chu Kai Hei. These are the books and business records of the average trading company. Please take a look. Chu was extremely surprised. Here, so many. No one. Before the subordinate left, he left a few explanations. Everyone who has free time has already gone to investigate the Citadel's case, so I can only trouble Lord Lam to see for myself. I have to go patrol immediately and take my leave. The room door was immediately closed tightly, thinking about having to look at the pile of books himself and find out the contents inside. Lam Fong felt a bit difficult and worried. After that, he turned to Chu Dia and said, Leave, Chu Dia, you can help me watch too. He smiled weakly in helplessness, Sir, I really want to, but I don't know. Hearing this, Lam Fong became so angry that his eyes turned red. Lam Fong fiercely grabbed Zhu Wei's collar, causing him to cry in fear. You better know how to read it to me right away, otherwise I will let you taste the power of knowledge. He was so scared that he kept saying yes, small person, small person. Outside, the sunlight shines directly into Lam Fong's room. Lam Fong is still attentively reading a book, um, in January he went to Nam So, transporting minerals. He was quite surprised when he read the part, in the middle of January, Zhuang Duk transported herbs. From early February to Fuha, on the map is the area in the south. Lam Fong seemed to realize something, in his mind were three phrases, Fai Din, Lo Tui, Sir Al Luke. After that, Lam Fong stood up and banged on the table, making a very loud bang, and then wondered if it was a coincidence that even though he went to a different place each time, he always went to the south. He held his head, looked up at the ceiling and thought, he didn't know what was being transported here, but in the previous world it was already a strategic material. Last night the Chamber of Commerce held a banquet, high-ranking people all came, but unfortunately it caught fire, no one survived. In the fire incident, the prisoner was not handed over to the government office, but was taken to the southern town government office. He said there was nothing wrong with it, I still have a hard time believing it. Lam Fong continued to study the contents of the book, followed by the list of goods traded. Finally, Lam Fong found it. Yes, Vong Hu Duk, this person is one of the counter-managers of the common merchant company. He had something to do last night so he couldn't participate. He's still alive. Lam Fong quickly closed the book, his expression was now extremely serious, now Ju Wei is being sent away by me, this matter has caught my eye, if it is as I guess, Vong Hu Duk will not live. Pass today. Next, Lam Fong stood up, shouted Chu Wei's name loudly, followed me out first to learn how to read, then came back and said, Ju Yi carried the calligraphy sheet, coming here, coming here, coming here. Lam Fong was surprised and wondered, haven't I already taught you to transcribe, and you still don't know how to read? Lam Fong pointed at each word and asked, what does this word mean? Please read it. He slowly tried to remember each word before daring to say it. Sister, sister. Lam Fong's voice was strict. Ha, huh, you've straightened your tongue. What about this word? Chu Wei seems to feel very stressed. He answered in a scared, ashy voice. But actually it's a rental. Lam Fong helplessly scratched his head. I never thought that in this life, I would encounter a person who could not distinguish between the letters CH and TR. A moment later, Lam Fong left with Ju Wei, his feet stepping heavily on the house's wooden panels. He grabbed his shirt and pulled him around, causing him to panic and have to hurry to stop them from killing and exterminating people. Lam Fong used magic tricks, immediately two days later they disappeared in the blink of an eye, as quickly as a passing wind. Movement speed cannot be controlled. And then, the two of them arrived at King Hu Duk's residence. People had not yet arrived when they heard Lam Fong's voice calling his name loudly and clearly, the king had virtue. Without hesitation, he rushed straight in. The king had virtue and was home. However, the atmosphere here is quite quiet, without a soul in sight. Lam Fong wondered if there was no one there. On the contrary, the speed just made Chu Wei gag. Unable to bear it, he immediately made a mess in the middle of the royal palace. Lam Fong was so angry that he turned to ask, Hey, have you vomited enough? He stood up and wiped his mouth. He was almost done and vomited, in a space so quiet that even a falling leaf can be felt. Lam Fong frowned and asked in a cold voice, Chu Wei, you have lived in Thin Kin for many years, do you know this family member? Chu Wei was still cleaning up the vomit stains on the corner of his mouth. Of course he knew that this was the western city, poor people often chose to settle down here. Old man Vong's mansion is considered special. In the past, small people who had nothing to do often came here to stroll around, wanting to see what the young lady of the Vong family looked like. Unfortunately, they never saw it. Thing, while speaking, a woman opened the door from inside and smiled slightly. Lam Fong immediately took precautions and asked who. Then he ran quickly in that direction and immediately a masked man in black jumped out and broke the door, holding a small knife in his hand. The man in black rushed through, holding a sword, straight into Lam Fong. 
the force he unleashed shattered the door. The confrontation between the two sides began to take place. The sword is getting closer and closer. Lam Fong has to be more vigilant. He gracefully dodged each slash. This fight is like a landslide. The walls were all broken. Chu Wei was so scared that she had to hide in a corner. The black-shirted man slashed down with a knife. Lam Fong immediately jumped up to avoid the killer move. His eyes flashed red aura. His clenched fists produced nine dragon nine elephant strike. A powerful punch hit the ground straight. A powerful punch hits the ground straight. Only heard a loud explosion, rocks and soil flying wildly. The smoke and dust dispersed. The man in black scratched his head and coughed. A ray of light shone into his eyes. When did Lam Fong jump in front of the man in black? His pupils widened in fear. Before he could react, Lam Fong kicked him in the middle. This one kick sent the black-clothed man through the entire ruined house. The speed he flew through was like a whirling tornado, rolling uncontrollably. Lam Fong walked out majestically under an atmosphere filled with dust and smoke. Suddenly, a hand grabbed his ankle. His mouth kept calling for help, help, help. Lam Fong glanced down and asked who you are. The girl answered while shedding tears, I am Vong Van Ton. My father was attacked by them. Before he could finish his sentence, Van Ton could not resist and fainted, Miss Vong. At the same time, the blindfolded man in black put a green pill into his mouth. His face became more and more fierce, his eyes were white, his mouth was drooling, he looked very scary. From that desolate building with piles of rubble, he rushed out directly towards Lam Fong. Lam Fong supported Vong Van Ton, but was still very calm in this emergency situation. He frowned and observed his actions carefully. After that, the two sides fought each other, and the noise continuously echoed throughout the whole palace. At the same time, a group of twelve figures just landed on the roof of the royal palace. They were extremely confused, what was going on, there was such a big commotion in the western city area. I don't know, I didn't hear anyone holding a trial in the west city. The red-haired man held a leaf branch in his mouth and gave orders with a serious face. Everyone shut up and listen to my orders. You go inform the other heavenly guardians and the commander of the envoy. The rest of you follow me, no matter what happens, you must control it first, not allowing chaos to appear at this time. The group under the red-haired Tian whose command immediately clasped their hands and obeyed. Clearly, Lord Tian Fu, no matter what plans are being discussed out there, the blindfolded black-shirted man is still fighting fiercely with Lam Fong, the rumbling noise is constantly resounding. They fought until the landslide caused rocks and soil to scatter. A person of the twelfth form came down next to Van Ton. He was quite surprised when he witnessed this match. Lam Fong delivered a light blow to the black-shirted man's chest, then pulled out his sword and glanced at him. Lam Fong thought to himself, is this guy crazy, using this desperate method? Lam Fong began to use his killer move, the golden light of the sword gradually flashed. One hand decisively slashes at the opponent. That slash caused the man in black to cut off an arm. Next, Lam Fong kicked him high into the air. Continuing to attack like that couldn't help but tire out. The black-shirted man was breathing heavily, the blood on the cut and his mouth kept falling onto the ground. Lam Fong pointed his sword straight at his face, stop trying to struggle, who sent you here? Right now, the system displays a notification, everyone, who can truly control their own destiny. In front of you is just an ordinary pitiful person, but his life and death are determined by you, please choose whether to kill the opponent or not. Unknown reward. Lam Fong was quite surprised after reading these notices. Ha, huh, is this worth choosing? It doesn't matter if you kill him or not. Suddenly, the man in black used his hand to hold onto Lam Fong's sword. His actions made Lam Fong extremely surprised, his eyes widened. Finally, he killed himself with Lam Fong's sword, stabbing himself in the neck. Blood splattered on Lam Fong's face, making him feel disgusted. After solving the black-shirted guy, the system displays, kill the black-shirted guy, the reward has been issued. Chu Wei at this time brought Van Ton to Lam Fong, happily calling, Big brother, you are so powerful, just a few moves and you can finish this guy. Lam Fong turned to ask a few words, is Miss Vong okay? It's okay, it's okay. Anyway, there aren't many opportunities for me to get close to women. Hearing that, Lam Fong immediately gave Ju Wei a few kicks and put him down. What are you thinking? I tried to dodge the attack but couldn't so I could only yell at someone. The sound of footsteps stepping on the roof suddenly sounded. It made Lam Fong alert and asked who it was. Three people in the twelve forms appeared. First was Bui Du Nam, Tian Hu Nam on North Town for Tai Twelfth Form. Next is Hoke Fai, Tian Hu Nam on North Town for Company, entering the second form. He was carrying a big knife around his neck. He walked in arrogantly and laughed, letting me see who was causing trouble in thin kin. The final appearance was not so gentle, the rumble of rocks was heard. That is the twelfth form of Tiger Theat, Tien Protect Yaman north of town prefecture. When he saw Lam Fong, he immediately said, we've already arrived. This kid is wearing the official uniform of the twelfth order. 
Whose subordinate is he that doesn't understand the rules so much? Right at this moment, Van Chin Ton, the commander of the 12th form of the Northern Town Prefecture's envoy, has also arrived. You guys have already left this morning and haven't had time to greet you yet. Lam Fong turned around and couldn't help but be surprised. Chin Ton introduced the three of them to Lam Fong's identity. This man was the husband of the eldest princess, the sixth prince of Nam So. Lam Fong clung to his wife's skirt. The little girl walking next to Chin Ton is Van Noye Lin, the adopted daughter of Van Chin Ton Nam on Back Town Prefecture 12th form. The last three words that Ton said made Lam Fong a bit embarrassed. Clinging to his wife's skirt doesn't need to be added, Van B.A.B.A. -ba. Van Chin Ton rolled his eyes with a fierce look on his face, intending to warn you. Van is bossy, you little brat, stop being so close to the old man. If Chu Van Lin marries you, the old man will die. Disagree. Standing in front of Van Chin Ton, Lam Fong is also extremely small, like a small shrimp, knowing fear. Lam Fong smiled lightly, it seems that the number of people who disagree with this marriage is also very large. Suddenly, Noyet Lin gently pulled Lam Fong's shirt. He looked slightly and asked, Huh? Lam Fong bent down to listen to Noyet Lin whispering in his ear. Brother, don't be angry, Grandpa loved Sister Van Lin too much, that's why he didn't agree with His Majesty's decision. He didn't mean to look down on you. I'll apologize to you on his behalf. Lam Fong happily and gently replied, Is that so? I respect you for being so good, I won't be angry anymore. What's your name? The little girl boldly replied, My name is Van Noyet Lin. Seeing them non-stop talking, she pinched her ears and scolded Noyet Lin, Go, go, the adults work, the children go over there to play. At this time, only Chin Ton and Lam Fong were standing and chatting together. Chin Ton has a question, I haven't asked you yet, aren't you going to investigate the arson incident by Ju? Why did you run here? Van B.A.B.A., -ba, when we investigated, we discovered that this matter was not simple. Someone intentionally wanted to kill everyone. Through the list of names, they came to this house and discovered that there was indeed a man in black hiding here, acting fiercely. For me, there is no other way but to kill him. Chin Ton gradually understood everything, this early in the South Town Company sent people to arrest gangsters on the street, I thought it was just a coincidence, now it seems. Hok Fai stepped on a rock and spoke, so because you fought with him, you caused such a big commotion. Lam Fong answered clearly and decisively, yes. Concubine Hoke spoke her thoughts, sir, do you think it is possible that Li Tham for sent you? At the same time, someone stepped into the palace, concubine, you have an opinion with the official. He is Luo Ham, 13th form of Tian Hun Ha Mon Nam Town Prefecture. He looked surprised, oh, the lords in the north have all gathered. If I remember correctly, the west city can be returned to our south town palace to manage. The atmosphere has become more and more tense since the mule appeared. Hua Fai looked disdainful, hum, the people who came unexpectedly were some sissies. Seeing others say that to me, I became very angry and shouted loudly, you crazy dog. After that, he rushed forward and wanted to challenge you. It seems like you don't want to have a tongue anymore. Hok Fai also did not give up, raised his hand and swung the knife. I don't mind turning you into a woman. Lam Fong and Chu Yi decided to sit down and watch the battle about to take place. So is it possible that we are preparing for a party? Is this because we want to fight? Chu Wei was delighted when Lam Fong mentioned the word party. He immediately made the choice, take me to sit at the children's table. Ho Triat didn't want to make a big deal out of it, so he clamped Wa Fai's neck to stop him from acting rashly. That's enough, Hok Fai, don't cause trouble at this time. Luo Ham pointed his sword at Hok Fai, instructing Ho Cheat to take good care of this crazy dog. Next time if he dares to speak again, I will definitely kill him. It's great that the men just arrived. We were just investigating recently. We happened to see some movement here. We just came to take a look. Don't misunderstand, don't misunderstand. Hok Fai asked for help from Tu Nam. You told Tiger to let me go, with his level 70 N Nguyen cultivation base, I can't kill him. The guy immediately said, two days ago he broke through Cable 8, just like you. Hok Fai was extremely surprised to hear this news. Hok Fai was squeezed until his face turned red. Tiger, you try a little harder, but you feel like you can't hold back. He repeatedly patted Tiger's arm with his hand, popping. The man walked up to Chin Ton and reported, Sir, the big smoke just now, it is estimated that everyone in the entire West City has seen it, it's an emergency, we should still report the source of the incident to the commander. Avoid being blamed. Chin Ton stroked his beard and thought, then felt that the idea given by the men was reasonable, so the rest is left to you, men, from now on you will bring Lam Fong, after all he represents the eldest princess. No need for success, just hope there are no mistakes. The male servant immediately clasped his hands and obeyed the order, clearly. As soon as he finished speaking, Chin Ton extended his hand to Noyet Lin. 
Immediately, the two of them disappeared. Lam Fong and Chu Di feel a bit disappointed. What a pity, they haven't fought yet. That's right, that's right, the party can't eat anymore. Seeing the two of them wandering around like that, the man was extremely indignant. He shouted loudly in anger, you two don't come over here. After all, this happened because of you, I didn't expect that you still had the mind to sit and watch the show. The two of them were scared to see the man so angry and obediently replied yes. Luoham also turned around and left. If the master of town history has said that I will leave it to you here, I will also be happy. Hua Fei didn't expect it to be resolved so easily. She didn't expect it to actually go away like that. Tiger clenched his hands even tighter, yes, it was indeed a bit strange, but leave him alone, there were other things to do. Hok Fai couldn't breathe, she patted him, hoping he would let go. Finally, the tiger also gave up and Hok Fai hugged his neck. Huh, leave it to you guys, if it wasn't for the man telling me, I wouldn't have come, I still have to go investigate the case in the city, his majesty is urgently urging me. Having said that, Hua Fai immediately turned around and left quickly. The subordinates who were accompanying him could not keep up and shouted loudly, Leader, wait for us. The boy is standing next to Tiger Chi Bao. This place is left to me, the case in the city is urgent, you should go quickly. Tiger replied happily, then I'd rather be respectful than obey orders. The man closed his eyes to feel the quiet moment. Then he breathed a sigh of relief and felt much more at ease. Then he looked at Lam Fong, coldly said, let's go, tell me what you found out. Lam Fong calmly replied, yes, the male ordered his subordinates to look to see if there was anything useful. They shouted loudly in unison, Lai Fong is the twelfth form of Tian Hun Ha Mon Nam Town Prefecture. He stood tall, his face serious and asked in a cold voice, how is it? Luo Ham clasped his hands together and reported, no problem, everyone in the Vong family died, Vong Van Ton was saved by that Lam Fong, just as predicted by the governor's envoy. Luo Ham smiled in excitement, Thin Kin has not been this bustling for a long time, thanks to Lam Fong. Lai Fong frowned and spoke up, the balance that had been maintained for so many years was finally broken, it wasn't this Lam Fong guy there would also be honor and prestige, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. Luoham spoke his mind, humorously, the courtiers forced the eldest princess to marry the sixth prince Nam So, thinking that it would make his majesty waver, but now it seems completely useless. They all want to change your majesty according to the rules, but they also know that your majesty is the one who created the rules. The more you do so, the more your majesty will resent them, and the position of the great princess will become stronger. This person is just the person that his majesty and the first princess used to silence them. Shouted in a decisive tone, I believe that someone must know this point, but the people below are too agitated to be able to negotiate. In the end, Laham still showed an unpleasant expression when he couldn't understand Lam Fong, but what Lam Fong was, as soon as he arrived at Thin Kin, he boasted everywhere, first killing the vice commander of the imperial guard, during the auction, he spent money like water to show off his wealth, played on top, dared to conflict with the duke's palace, and then luckily saved his highness's younger brother, there was his shadow everywhere. Lai Fong agreed with La Ham's thoughts, that's right, regardless of whether it was intentional or unintentional, Tian Kin was in chaos because of him, the eldest princess let him accept the position in the twelfth sentence, I don't know if it was ulterior motive. What? La Ham happily replied, ha, Fong brother, I've thought too much, isn't the eldest princess worried about us causing trouble for him, so she let him into the northern town government office and let Van Chin Ton protect him. The new method explains, Luo Ham, the higher a person's status, the more affected they will be. The eldest princess has been in the position of successor for so many years, in addition to her majesty's support, it is also related to her ability. Her great power. I don't believe she simply wants to protect Lam Fong, there must be a plan that we don't know about. At the same time, it was a coincidence that the conversation between the eldest princess and Van Chin Ton matched Lai Fong's story. She smiled lightly and replied to him, of course yes. Van Chin Ton also wondered very much, could it be that his highness putting Lam Fong in the twelfth sentence not only wanted to protect him, but also had other intentions? She smiled then turned around and gently said, it's no longer funny to say it out loud, Lam Fong has made such a big mess, I think that Thin Kin already has a lot of people paying attention to him, after all he is my fiancé. Me, there will be many people who will use him to attack me. Her eyes were now heavier, worried about what my big brother would do. The carriage has also come to a stop. The door creaked slowly as it opened. Van Long walked in with an extremely upset expression and asked in an annoyed tone, how's it going? The old man holding the stick next to him replied, his highness rest assured, the trial run will definitely be completed before the ceremony. And then the two of them slowly went inside. Van Long complimented him, 
that was good, Van Long thought to himself with an unrelenting determination, eight days, just wait another eight days and that's it. At the same time, the sound of strong wind blowing and hitting the branches and leaves made a continuous rustling sound. Noyet Lin, after being unconscious for a while, finally regained consciousness, her eyes slowly opened. Her eyes hadn't opened yet, she quickly asked where this was. Men's clothes, Lam Fong and Chu Dai together looked towards Noyet Lin. Miss Vong, are you okay? Noyet Lin suddenly panicked, quickly sat up, and called loudly two times, Father. That made them all scared and frightened. Lam Fong calmed down and softly asked her, Princess, Princess, don't you remember anything, your family was. Before she could clearly explain the problem, Noyet Ling cried out, Dad, Mom. After that, she apologized to everyone, this young lady was rude. Lam Fong kindly gave advice to Noyet Lin, Miss Vong's family is in trouble, I understand very well, but this matter is very urgent and we need to find the murderer to be able to comfort the deceased. I guess the thief is because of this. Business, that's why he killed people. I hope the princess remembers the negotiation between the venerable and the common merchant company, she replied sadly, I don't remember much, I only heard my father mention a company that sells minerals, herbs, and medicinal herbs, and said these things don't make much money, I don't know what the boss thinks. What, he also said that every time he did something very troublesome, but every time he went to the south office to deliver the goods, he also had to have a seal stamped by Zhuang Duk, and to hear other counter managers say the same thing, it wasn't helping the enemy at all. There. Speaking of this, Lam Fong also understands a bit, indeed, the different destinations are all just borrowed names, the real place of transaction is the south. After that, Noyet Lin remembered more details, ah, that's right, listening to my father, the other person's counter manager was very strange, always wearing a wide-brimmed hat, not showing his face when meeting him, saying he was sick with something. There, but one time, a counter manager got drunk, take off your opponent's hat, then discovered that the opponent's head had a huge scar. Even though that counter-manager was drunk, when he saw it, his eyes widened in surprise. In that room, only screams could be heard. After that, no one saw that counter-manager again. Lam Fong knelt down in front of Noyet Lin and added, Wait a minute, you said that person wearing a hat is a dishonest bald guy. Noyet Lin repeatedly replied yes, yes, the hired worker came back and said so. After that, Lam Fong turned to the male figure, Bui Tien Ho, the person who initially attacked the city gate was a man with green skin and no hair. The man calmly replied, yes, I know about this, the soldiers already told us at that time, but I didn't expect these two things to be related. At the same time, Lai Fong still stood proudly on the porch, observing and waiting for new news. La Ham predicted that they would probably go to Thin Tien for next. Lai Fong also agrees, probably so. Luo Ham patted Lai Fong's shoulder, okay, I'll go arrange for someone to follow. Lai Fong only coldly looked at him with half an eye, then advised, yes, to do it carefully. As soon as Luo Ham left, sharp eyes appeared, his hatred became even greater, Lam Fong, the more you investigate, the faster you will die, right now, the weather is extremely fresh, the sky is clear and blue, there is a couple of birds expressing their love to each other on the porch, suddenly, a foot hurriedly passed by, making them extremely frightened, that was Lam Fong's group of people, moving at quite a fast speed when he suddenly remembered, isn't it, god bless, we don't have any transportation tools at all, Tu Nam frowned and thought, he felt that horses were the fastest and not much different from the monks of Tian Nuyen, not to mention that they had so much time delay, they were not as strong as our legs. He caught up with Lam Fong and added, most of the roofs in Thin Kin have been reinforced, to let monks like us go. Having said that, the man pointed to the high-rise tower in the distance, look over there. This tower is Lin Tian Dap, considered the only structure in Ton Kin, able to monitor all directions within 200 miles, and can also prevent monks of unknown origin from scattering in the air, once discovered and shot dead on the spot. After hearing this, Lam Fong couldn't help but be surprised and confused, huh, so before I was flying back and forth on the roof, it didn't shoot me. The male uniform looked at Lam Fong with sharp eyes and said, you should thank me for changing the uniform for 20 pictures, otherwise. Suddenly he stopped speaking and shouted decisively, almost there, regaining his composure. They also saw that and responded clearly, right now, this is also the time when the festival is still eight days away. Someone's hand, looking angry, was placed firmly on the papers. That action was that of a man, he felt confused, not right, how could this matter have anything to do with the fourth prince? As for Lam Fong, he was still attentively reading the content on the paper. After a while of research, Lam Fong also discovered an important idea, probably the branch, this branch above has only 23 shops under his name. As for the men, they kept wondering, this matter seems normal to everyone, only the four princes. Seeing that, Lam Fong also asked, do you think his identity is correct? The man began to explain according to his own thoughts, 
partly because of that, partly because of the specialness of the fourth prince, he is the youngest son of his majesty, and is pampered by his majesty. At the queen's funeral, his majesty took even more care of him, entrusting the entire treasury to him to manage. Lam Fong was quite surprised, the treasury was also managed by him. So doesn't he have the ability to compete for the throne? Why hasn't anyone heard of him? Tu Nam continued, especially here, he withdrew from competing for the royal throne very early. The matter of managing the industry for his majesty, the spirit arrow tower that you see, was researched by him. And develop, Lam Fong put his hand on his chin, frowned and thought, what you say is really not right, unless someone wants to harm him. At the same time, the system pops up a notification forcing Lam Fong to choose yes or no. Oh, my little friend, first of all, congratulations on finding an important clue to the true fourth prince's situation. It's not trivial, do you really want to turn against the fourth prince for such an unimportant truth? Lam Fong smiled confidently, a systematic person like me, I'm still afraid of a prince like him, of course I investigate. After that, Lam Fong decisively used his index finger to press the right button. And then, Lam Fong turned to ask the man, are we going to the fourth prince's palace to inquire? The man's sharp eyes appeared with a determined look, that was all, let's go. Seeing the male figure hastily running ahead, Lam Fong was extremely surprised, ha, huh, jogging again. The man continued to run as fast as he could, told Lam Fong to stop talking and set off. He agreed and followed. As soon as they arrived, the jade pendant fell to the ground and two sounds of can't be seen rang out. The group of government guards held spears and pointed them straight at Lam Fong and Nam Tu and said, but as his highness said, this shop is indeed under his name, but I don't know about the others, you guys go somewhere else. But investigate, the male servant calmly expressed his opinion, we did not doubt your highness, we were worried that someone was intentionally slandering us, you heard about the citadel gate case two days ago, the king was angry, the men began to make threats, their voices were even more tense than before. We are investigating here based on clues. Could it be that you want me to ask for his majesty's edict, so that everyone can be satisfied? I know, is it new? The people guarding the palace began to wonder, looking at each other not knowing what to decide. TSK. Then, there was a hand placed gently on them. That is the appearance of the governing body. The old man coldly told everyone that, gentlemen, follow me. After receiving the invitation, the man still did not forget to thank his predecessor Deep Thua. Deep Thua was quite surprised. Oh, this great man knows me. The male monk happily recounted the story of the past. When he was still a pneumatic monk, he alone fought against thirteen pneumatic monks, killing six people, a battle that became famous throughout the world. Twelve figures still remain. No. Deep Thua heard it and felt proud of himself so he smiled lightly, he he, it's all over. When Lam Fong heard about Deep Thua's achievements, he also began to worry, single-handedly killing thirteen monks of the same level, masters. At that time, he was at his peak, in order to break through the realm, he challenged thirteen monks of the same realm in one breath, but rumor has it that he was not successful, he was seriously injured and fled, not knowing why he appeared again. In Thin Kin, Deep Thua stood looking towards the sky and could see your majesty, you arrogant person. Next, the three of them went into the palace. It seemed like the place was quite quiet, without a soul in sight. Lam Fong approached a door and was startled, thinking, what the hell, it scared the hell out of me. The man came to ask, what's wrong? That door gradually opened. There are many children inside, children who are being bullied and forced to scream and give it back to me. There is a child with a runny nose who is eating candy. Both of them were surprised when they saw this scene. What is this? Deep Thua looked at it and explained. These are all children that no one raised in the city. His Highness had mercy on them, accepted them here. Let's go. Tu Nam and Deep Thua had left, but Lam Fong still hesitated there for a while. The look before closing the door, the boy who had just eaten the candy looked up and called out two songs. Although Lam Fong heard it, he was still determined to close that door. The light outside was gradually dimmed, but the boy still wholeheartedly called brother brother, then he really left, now only his back could be seen, Tu Nam and Lam Fong went into the hall to sip tea and talk to each other, Lam Fong wanted to know more about the four princes, so he asked Tu Nam, Tien Ho, what kind of person the fourth prince is, you say, let's listen, the man also felt that it would be good for Lam Fong to understand a little better, the fourth prince was born by the first queen, named Van Tang, the first prince's biological brother, the youngest child of his majesty, and is very favoured. The fourth prince has been studious since childhood, a humble person, and his reputation in the palace has always been very good. The basic aptitude is also very good. At the age of five, he began to train his body. This aptitude, it is not too much to say that it has the hope of condensing true essence, but, Lam Fong is constantly curious, but what? That was a palace incident five years ago, causing the fourth prince's foundation to be abolished. Lam Fong was surprised, 
Huh, what turning point is this? Five years ago, I was just a royal guard. At that time, the queen's palace suddenly caught fire. Seeing this, the man immediately asked everyone what was going on. The fire was so big that all we could hear was people calling for each other to quickly put out the fire. What's surprising is that in that fire, look, someone rushed out, was a lady whose dress was torn by the fire. The other man could not believe what was happening before his eyes, always wondering why it was like this. He had to watch each of his relatives leave and his heart ached. Why was it like this? His eyes showed red veins, his mouth screamed loudly in frustration. Ah, the fire grew bigger and bigger. At the same time, the silhouette of a girl rushed out, causing everything to collapse. She was about to run away from this place when someone asked her where she wanted to go. Unfortunately, a hand grabbed her head so tightly that she couldn't resist. He screamed three times and came back immediately. Every acupuncture point on her body was destroyed by his force. Immediately afterwards she fell straight down. I only heard a thud sound, rocks, dust, and smoke flying everywhere. Her mouth vomited blood, her whole body was in pain, and she let out two coughing sounds. He slowly walked closer to her and asked, who sent you, say I will let you die comfortably, but don't say, ha. Huh. She gave a contemptuous smile, then stopped breathing immediately. That change in the palace resulted in the queen being poisoned to death, and her fourth royal highness's bones were damaged. If the princess had not arrived in time, I'm afraid her fourth highness would have had a hard time escaping this disaster. Lam Fong felt uneasy, this was the behavior of a martyr, if she died like that, it would be impossible to find out who was behind the orders. But everything was completely the opposite. Through investigation, this person was very clean, was by concubine's close maid, was adopted by by concubine from a young age, and brought into the palace, and this by concubine was the eldest daughter's biological mother. Princess and Her Highness. Lam Fong doesn't want to believe it, this must be fake, surely it's not something he suddenly did, is there some mistake? The male servant doesn't know for sure what's going on, the palace maid can't investigate further, this matter still has no conclusion, the commander who is investigating this matter behind the scenes also doesn't know. Why do you leave it alone? The eldest prince was agitated, thinking that it must be the imperial concubine who had poisoned him. When he entered the palace, he brazenly attacked the imperial concubine. Fortunately, the eldest princess in the palace stopped him, and from then on, the two of them turned against each other. His majesty was also angry after hearing about it, bluntly abolished the first prince's position as crown prince and passed it on to the first princess. From that moment on, the crown prince's faction and the princess's faction opposed each other, followed by the fourth prince's affair. Not participating in the competition for the crown prince, attracting the attention of the courtiers, but his majesty felt even more guilty, and then took care of him more. Lam Fong asked further, so who is the queen now? When asked about this question, the man's eyes suddenly became sad, which was the original his royal highness. Lam Fong had some doubts, did the emperor have a grudge against the eldest prince, and why did he stimulate him like that? Men feel differently, who knows, maybe their views on politics are different. This statement made Lam Fong a bit surprised, HM, what do you mean? At that moment, a straight foot stepped inside. The two of them stood up and greeted his highness. Lam Fong also welcomed him but did not know where his highness was, because at that time we only saw the presence of the filler vehicle. Following him, another small foot walked in. It was a boy who was still young, yet Lam Fong can say such thoughtless words. It's too low, not even reaching my knees. The man was afraid that they would punish him if he heard it, so he immediately warned him, Lam Fong, not to be rude. The system announced the ding, this time it was green, different from the previous announcements. The system content said, wow, the fourth prince is so young, don't you want to flirt? The system knows you say you don't need it, but in fact you really want it, so go, now. Right now there is only one right select button. Lam Fong's face turned blue, he was sweating, he gritted his teeth and said I don't want it, I don't have it, don't slander me. Damn, yet there is no alternative to refusal. Lam Fong approached the fourth prince and gently stroked his head. Lam Fong smiled and said happily to him, Your Highness is also lovely, I am your brother-in-law. When the boy heard Lam Fong joking like that, he was scared for him. Is this kid stupid? Deep Thua was also so angry that he frowned and shouted, You, why are you? That anger made Deep Thua use so much force that he tore his clothes, daring to touch his highness with your dirty hands. The fourth prince not only did not get angry, but on the contrary, he raised his hand to give instructions. The fourth prince gently looked at Lam Fong and said, Well, I know this, the sixth prince of Namju Lam Fong, but the first time we met, I didn't expect you to join the twelve squads, there is someone you don't have. It's really okay to have a brain like that. Hearing the fourth prince say that, Lam Fong froze, he smiled faintly and then removed his hand. It was so embarrassing that he couldn't help himself. 
Lam Fong then blamed the system, it was all because of this brainless system, causing me to be considered brainless by others. The fourth prince helplessly touched his head, then go to the chair and sit in position. The fourth prince asked seriously, okay, why are you looking for me? The fourth prince tilted his head slightly, somewhat puzzled. Although the shops were indeed under my name, what did they have to do with the city gate case? The male representative stood up to talk about the incident, and it was like this. After talking for a long time, the men's clothes ended in one sentence, roughly like that. Deep Thua placed a cup of tea on the table. Your Highness, please have some tea, the fourth prince spoke while sipping. Some people are similar, judging that the two things are related, which is reasonable. The man seems quite confident after telling everything to the fourth prince, his highness, so. Before he could say his thoughts, the fourth prince put down his teacup and said two words, but, if you have something, you have to have something in return. The fourth prince set the conditions. It's useless for you to use your father to force me. If you want me to help you, then, the man was surprised and asked, so what? The fourth prince smiled softly and comfortably, then you must follow my rules, then, one of you, arm wrestle with deep thua next to me, if you win, I will help you, if you lose, then get out. Go, how? Deep Thua heard the prince say this proposal and felt a bit helpless, but could not speak up. The men, and even Lam Fong were surprised. What? The male disciple is worried, your highness, who doesn't know the name NGOC Thu Deep Thua back then? We are also just in the natural world. The fourth prince gave a sinister smile, he he, then a sharp look towards the male, Bui Tien Ho, you must know that I am a prince, even a child, I am very arbitrary, today you all come to investigate, I will help you. Tomorrow they will come for a walk in the South Town Palace, will I also cooperate, what else can I do? Of course, I know your cultivation levels are very different, so you can use any method, we will simply wrestle, don't say I don't take care of you. After hearing this, the man was speechless. Lam Fong happily patted the boy's shoulder. If the prince wants to play, then let his subordinates play with him. Deep Thua smiled lightly and said that Lam Fong was an unreasonable person. On the contrary, the fourth prince found it interesting. Lam Fong clasped his hands in front of Deep Thua. Let me receive this teaching of Deep Thua. The man couldn't help but feel worried, turned around and asked, Lam Fong, do you really have faith? Lam Fong smiled softly and assuredly, Tien Ho reassured, then thought to himself, I have confidence in that fart, if it weren't for this system just telling me to come up, you'd think I'd be sure. The system announced again, no, no, someone really dared to attack in front of the system. It's just an aura that doesn't know the height of the sky and the thickness of the earth. To rule him, you have to rule him. You want to refuse, but you can't. Absolutely not. Lam Fong is probably quite tired of this system, big brother, if you win the prize, can you not drag me along? I just want to take it easy, everyone went outside the palace, Deep Thua got into position, placed his hand on the stone table, inviting Lam Fong to receive the attack, the two hands were tightly clasped together. The match hadn't started yet but it seemed like both of them were trying to use their strength, the tendons in their hands were showing many lines, men dressed as judges stood outside giving orders and preparing. The eyes of the two of them were extremely determined, one win or two lost. Before the match, Lam Fong smiled lightly and said, Please have mercy on me senior, my small body cannot handle your seriousness. Deep Thua doesn't care much, talk less, use all your skills, I'll wait and see. The man's arm raised, giving a command. Suddenly started, Lam Fong could not control his strength, his eyes widened in surprise. Lam Fong is trying very hard to use his inherent ability, a green aura appears to surround his body. That's a technique called Nine Dragons, Nine Dragons, this move causes the ground to chip in four different directions. Deep Thua's expression became more and more tense, not trivial. He used all his strength to brace himself, the veins in his hand became much larger. At this time, the victory is more towards Deep Thua, Lam Fong still tries his best not to let himself lose, he grits his teeth and endures. The man from the outside observed and was extremely surprised. Just relying on his strength, he was able to overcome Lam Fong's techniques. Lam Fong was so nervous that his face turned red, sweat was flowing drop by drop, he felt that he couldn't do it, if he continued like this he would lose for sure, he had no choice but to play alone. Lam Fong held up his two fingers, slowly turned towards the opponent. However, that action was guessed by Deep Thua, he used his remaining hand to stop it. Then he pushed Lam Fong's hand away and poked his eyes, only the child could play. Suddenly, Deep Thua screamed in pain, the pain felt like being struck by lightning, his eyes turned white, what a joke. It turned out that the eye poke was just to distract Deep Thua, at the same time Lam Fong used force to step on his foot. The fourth prince is quite amused, ha ha, that's great, Lam Fong, you're really sinister. Perhaps at this time, Lam Fong is confident in holding victory in his hands, step on the star's feet to see if you can endure it. 
A drum sound made the spirit more enthusiastic, Lam Fong almost defeated Deep Thua, but he braced himself to keep his position. Deep Thua's arm was so strong that the blue veins were clearly visible. Lam Fong, you're very good. I originally didn't want to use it, but now, the fierce, determined voice came from Deep Thua, this arm of yours, I'll take it for sure, Deep Thua's face right now is very fierce and scary, his eyes are white, his eyebrows are wrinkled, his teeth are clenched tightly. Lam Fong's hand was gradually corroded when Deep Thua used his moves. Lam Fong's hair seemed to freeze. The man didn't have the heart to turn and tell the fourth prince, His Highness, it was just a duel. Deep Thua used his spiritual power again. Deep Thua lost. The fourth prince calmly replied, Oh is that so? You say so. But Deep is very angry. I can't advise you. Maybe Bui Tien will try it. Lam Fong is in a lot of pain after being eroded like that. Seeing this, the man who cannot see death cannot be saved, his hand tightly grasps the sword, the princess has the grace to recreate it with me. Why should I feel sorry for this body, let go of my hand? As he spoke, the man drew his sword and rushed forward. Lam Fong instead shouted loudly telling him not to come here. The man immediately stopped and watched as Lam Fong's arm gradually eroded until it turned pale. In times of danger like this, Lam Fong still tells heaven to rest assured, I can still endure it. Deep Thua complimented Lam Fong, wise choice, I respect the great princess and spare your life, but a twelve heavenly guardian like him, daring to step within two steps of me, will definitely kill you. Incomplete death, Lam Fong doesn't want to listen to Deep Thua's blabbering anymore, you talk too much, old man, let's see how I deal with you. Lam Fong's current expression looks very confident of victory. Deep Thua still underestimates Lam Fong's strength, the young man does not know how high the sky is and how thick the earth is. Deep Thua remembers the past when he couldn't break the mirror, unfortunately this world is very cruel, no matter how strong you are. The old man seemed helpless and bowed to the ground. No matter how strong you are, there will always be someone stronger than you. Right at that moment of collapse, a brother appeared and stood in front of him, mocking him. Ngoc Thu Deep Thua, it's nothing. Deep Thua swallowed the bitterness, could only bear it, he held his hands tightly to his knees and hurt himself, just taste what I felt back then. Returning to reality, Deep Thua warns you again, letting you know the price of being aggressive. Lam Fong is concentrating and waiting to catch the moment, which is now. Lin Fong thought, use the reverse divine action technique, change the direction of the meridians to the opposite hand, then, suddenly, Deep Thua reacted strongly in surprise, ha, huh. Lam Fong resolutely shouted, go away. A loud noise rang out, causing the four princes to be frightened. At this time, only smoke and dust were seen at the scene, with broken stones flying out from it. The man was extremely surprised, Lam Fong had won. The strength that Lam Fong resisted caused the stone table to explode. Deep Thua couldn't believe that someone could beat him, what? Lam Fong smiled happily at this glorious victory. He used his other hand to massage the wrist with the force he had just used. If he wasn't aggressive, how could he be called a young man? Deep Thua angrily used his fist to scream at the ground in anger, you. He slowly stood up, do you think you can, okay? The four emperors spoke from afar, it's okay, Lam Fong has won, of course I have to keep my promise, conflicts always teach me that either I don't agree, or I agree, I have to do it. However, Deep Thua did not mind and still wanted to say something to his highness, and then, he regained his composure, then stood up and bowed his head to apologize. I was rude. I hope your highness will forgive me. After the battle was clearly decided, the four princes kept their promise and offered to say, if you have anything you want to ask, say it. The man hesitated then said, us. Before he could ask a question, the fourth prince quickly raised a finger and said, one sentence. I can only answer you one question, think carefully before asking. After hearing this, the men and Lam Fong froze. The two of them whispered loudly and discussed with each other. God, what do you think? You can't ask about the city gate case, your fourth highness may not know it, and the eldest prince can't mention it either. While they were handing over, Deep Thua whispered in the fourth prince's ear. Your highness, it was not the first prince who spoke. The fourth prince is very tough, no need to say more, big brother has his concerns, I have my own thoughts, this Lam Fong. The fourth prince looked towards Lam Fong and felt that Lam Fong was of great use. After a while of calculating, the male said, well, it's decided, you ask, Lam Fong. Okay, leave it to me. The two of them turned to face the fourth prince and reported, Your Highness, we want to ask. Their eyes longed to know the answer clearly, they wanted to know the truth about the fire at the popular store. The fourth prince smiled lightly, thinking that if you asked vaguely, I would be able to handle it, but I didn't expect to get straight into the topic like that, so bold. The fourth prince leaned closer to his face and recalled a few things, the truth. After that, 
His Highness raised his head and spoke, First of all, I can tell you that our shop was indeed destroyed by Li Shunfu. The men as well as Lam Fong heard these words like a thunderbolt, and were extremely surprised. Anyway, the fourth prince also warned them, But don't be under the illusion that I will help you defeat Li Tham Fu. The words I say now, when I leave the palace, I will pretend I never said them. Next, the fourth prince raised his hand to continue. Second, the transaction object of the popular brand is always the same person his name is. When it came time to say the name, it was quite tense and also an important moment, the fourth prince's voice lowered, clearly stating the three words Nam Tien Kwok. After hearing this, the man frowned and remembered, what is the country of the south? That sounds so familiar. The fourth prince sat down in his chair and thought that it was normal for Bui Tien Ho to not know. After all, each city and three countries of the Qianyuan continent all tried to reduce the influence of the southern heavenly kingdom, but Lam Fong you probably know, after all, they are the royal family of the southern region. Lam Fong immediately glanced sideways and thought back, HM, the southern kingdom, in his memory, he tried to remember the past story of Prince Lam Fong of Nam So. When he was young, Lam Fong once asked his teacher, Master, Master, where the Nam Tien kingdom came from. Lam Fong sat cross-legged neatly at his desk, raised his hand happily and added the reason he asked the above question. I saw in the royal history that they came from another world. But at the same time, there was a classmate who looked annoyed and turned to look at Lam Fong, bragging about something. Huh, the teacher stroked his beard and replied, Well, Lam Fong, first I want to express your curiosity, this is very good, but as a person you have to be more polite, in class you have to raise your hand first, so the teacher punishes you. After class, I write down the ceremony once. Lam Fong lowered his face and looked sad but still complied with the teacher's wishes, oh, the disciple received his punishment. The friends around were extremely excited to see such a forest. To avoid making the class noisy, the teacher gently coughed a few times. After that, the teacher turned towards the podium, picked up the chalk, he still decided to answer that question, but if Lam Fong had already mentioned it, the teacher would take this opportunity to tell you about it. This, the monk wrote the three words Kwok Tien Nam on the board, then repeated the name Nam Tien Kwok. Nam Tien Kwok is the name of the Chenyuan continent for them, because they originally appeared in the air farther south than Nam So. People misheard rumors, this name Nam Tien Kwok is also from there it spread. As for themselves, they even want to call themselves, the Empire of Truth. They wore armored suits that covered their entire bodies. After a year since the Empire of Truth appeared, war broke out. No one knows how the war happened, at least we don't know, it was a great war that had never happened before, one city of three countries of the universe, led by Donglam City, formed an alliance. Attack the southern kingdom, because the battle was so disastrous, in the end 13 monks of the divine wandering realm joined forces to attack. The entire southern kingdom of heaven then turned into nothingness. But Nam Chu Tien Kwok seems to be completely satisfied with the creation of technology, just like the glasses in my hand are from Nam Tien Kwok, which is really convenient for old people like me. Having said that, the monk took off his glasses and gently used a towel to wipe the lenses clean. After that, he looked at those glasses and hoped they would look for them again next time. He carefully put on his glasses and said in a cold voice that he could find a mainland that kept his faith. Lam Fong remembered everything but felt that it was unfortunate, it was over, it was a high-tech empire, what's worse, the people of the Qingquan continent were directly destroyed, even more shallow. This look again. Seeing Lam Fong's expression, the fourth prince propped his chin up and smiled and spoke, it seems you remember. Lam Fong asked frankly, weren't they destroyed by the alliance led by Dong Lam Citadel that year? The fourth prince yawned and replied, a dead snake still has venom, let alone a civilization. Even if Dong Lam City ordered to destroy the remnants of the southern kingdom, the countries would only show disapproval. Stop, but the thing that is responsible for the common merchant is this task, using some worthless resources, exchanging for the technology of the remnants of the southern heavenly kingdom, to buy and sell more calculatingly. Hearing the conversation between Lam Fong and the fourth prince, the man was like someone falling from the sky, asking himself, who am I, where am I, why can't I understand what they're saying? The fourth prince, ignoring the bewilderment and incomprehension of the male servant, continued to say that he was under my name, just because his eldest brother's identity at that time was the crown prince, and the crown prince could not have any stains. And I of course don't have these concerns. Lam Fong seriously asked one final question. So what was the gate case? However, the fourth prince raised his hand to stop. His highness tilted his head and smiled slightly. My answer only stopped at arson. Saying that, Lam Fong immediately asked another question. So please tell your highness, why did Lai Tham for destroy the brand and kill the people involved? Hearing Lam Fong ask that, the man turned to look and couldn't help but be surprised. It seemed like the fourth prince was starting to get angry, coldly calling Lam Fong's name. Your highness's face is very stony at this moment, you really still dare to ask. Yet Lam Fong is still calm and calm in an unexpected way. 
In any case, the eldest prince has nothing to do with it. Everything is done by profound reason, so is there anything I don't dare to ask? His highness did not dare to speak, the fourth prince was so angry that he was so mad, his hands clenched on the chair, I, if Lam Fong's provocative words made the fourth prince uneasy, then it would be even more true to my opinion. Humph, after all, you are still a child, a few words have made you speechless, you are playing too much. Ha, huh. Deep Thua saw that the situation was going further and further than originally expected, so he stood up and gave instructions, this thing did not know etiquette. Deep Thua's whole body at this moment seemed to contain an evil power, his fierce eyes turned red with anger, he asked in a harsh voice as a warning, do you want to die? Lam Fong was also not satisfied. Immediately, a pressure sword appeared in his hand. My old man has tolerated you for a long time. If you are someone's dog, watch the door well. He pointed the sword straight at Deep Thua and told him not to stand aside and scream. The two of them looked at each other as if they wanted to devour each other alive, confronting each other endlessly. Suddenly, right when the situation was tense, when the war was about to take place, the four princes burst into tears and used their clothes to wipe away the tears. This made the atmosphere completely reduce tension, all the tension was directed towards the four princes, they were worried and confused, your highness, the more he asked, the louder the prince cried. Hoo hoo hoo, you, you bullied me, I have to tell his father. Tez welled up, Deep Thua had to come to comfort and comfort, your highness, please don't cry. Lam Fong and the men stood still, not knowing what to do. After that, Lam Fong felt like he couldn't ask anything else, so he turned to ask the men what to do. The man thinks that this is enough, it is not easy to ask that much, so go ahead. In the end, they decided to leave. Your Highness, we will leave first. The four princes secretly looked at the backs of the two of them, still crying. His Highness asked Deep Thua, did they leave? Yes, gone. The four princes felt angry and slammed their hands hard on the chair, damn it. Angry eyes appeared. Lam Fong, I underestimate you. Dare to bully me like that. Deep Thua asked, your Highness, Lithamfer Amphor told me that after they entered the palace, I would arbitrarily find an excuse to kill them. Why did your Highness? The fourth prince asked in return, so why should I listen to him? What is the benefit of provoking Song Van Lin at this important moment? He also refuses to think, when faced with trouble, he only wants to fight and kill. And then, the fourth prince coldly asked, when did those kids arrange the trick? Deep Thua bowed his head and replied, tonight, the four princes are plotting unpredictable things, okay, there are only eight days left until the Lunar New Year. Lam Fong and his men's clothes walked out of the palace looking very comfortable and cheerful. Tien Ho, the story is clear, what should I say now? The man finds this a bit sensitive, wait until I inform the commander before deciding. Lam Fong immediately agreed. Okay. At the same time, there was the silhouette of a person lurking behind the wall watching the two of them. At this time, it was already afternoon, the sky was red, and the sunset was gradually rising. Lam Fong happily opened the door. Bang. Ruby. Ruby. I'm back, I'll tell you, you don't know how many things happened today, I feel like I'm dreaming right now. Stepping inside, the image of Ruby treating Moon Lin's wound caught Lam Fong's eyes. The moon spirit turned around and blushed shyly, while the ruby was helpless Aya. Then he used a kick to kick Lam Fong out of the room. Why didn't the young master knock on the door? It's so rude. Lam Fong and small potted plants also flew out, really, really embarrassing. The potted plant was still attached to Lam Fong's head. He sighed, remembering that I hadn't knocked on the door before. After that, he remembered Noyet Lin's back with pleasure, but it was so white, his face turned red. Suddenly someone called my name, Fong C.A., Fong C.A., that is the joyful call of Chu D.I. Lam Fong touched his head and turned around. Was he strange? Chu Wei was so happy that he quickly ran straight to Lam Fong, thinking he would be welcomed, but Lam Fong instead punched him. Kid, where are you going? Chu Wei used his hand to touch the place where he had just been beaten, his other hand pointed towards the kitchen. Ayo, Fong C.A., Sister Ruby told me to prepare the medicine in the kitchen. Lam Fong just said oh, what about Miss Vong? Ruby stepped out to speak, no, Miss Vong only had a little skin injury, I have already applied medicine to her. Lam Fong didn't really understand, so he asked, so who is this medicine for? Ruby gave a sinister smile, of course it was a tonic for the young master. Lam Fong shouted, don't do it. After taking the medicine, Lam Fong felt exhausted sitting on the table, without any strength left. Dude, let's eat. In front of Lam Fong right now there are three dedicated people, Chu Wei, Ruby and Moon Lin. Ruby is very worried about you. Is it true that you can't eat it? 
or maybe Ruby will give you another dose of medicine. Thinking about having to drink another cup of medicine, Lam Fong seemed to wake up, his eyes bright. He stood up with a healthy look and said, no, I'm very alert. Lam Fong took a big bowl of white rice, now I feel delicious, I won't be polite anymore. Seeing Lam Fong so full of energy, Ruby and Moon Spirit are very happy, so that's okay. And then the four people sat together at dinner, chatting together. That's right, strange, the arson case has been investigated clearly, you are no longer suspicious. Ju Wei is extremely grateful, wow, thank you Fong. Chu Di expressed his sincerity by giving Lam Fong food, Fong Ca has worked hard, let's eat meat. Lam Fong immediately reacted violently, hmm, fuck, that's ginger, what's wrong with your eyes, kid? After a while of sharing a meal, Noye Lin told Ruby that her relationship with Prince Lam was very good. Ruby innocently replied, after all, my little boy has grown up with you. Noye Lin's face looked completely sad, just oh that's all. Seeing her unhappy face, the ruby was intended to comfort her, Sister Vong, the dead cannot be resurrected, please reduce your sadness, just stay in the palace. Noye Lin raised her head and smiled gently, yes, thank you Miss Ruby, it was already night time, and there was still constant chatter in the Lam Fong palace. Strangely enough, that piece of meat was picked up by me first. Ha, huh, I thought it was ginger, so I took it out. Aya, stop making noise, there's still a lot of meat left. In another place, there is a hand lighting a fire to light up the dark room. Lai Fong came to tell Lai Tham for everything, it was like that. Lai Tham Fu coldly replied, is that so, the fourth prince doesn't take action, it's okay, it was originally an unintentional action, if it works then it's good, if it doesn't then it's over. He continued asking, has Fong Van Ton returned with Lam Fong? The logic unequivocally answered yes. Thamfa looked at the fire that had just been lit and smiled happily. Very good. After all, who knew that the prince originally had no daughters? As soon as his hand touched the candle tray, he thought to himself, this is called soot under the lamp. While Noyet Lin is happily accepting what is called a new family, she doesn't know what tricks Lai Thamfu is about to come up with to harm her. While Noyet Lin is happily accepting what is called a new family, she doesn't know what tricks Lai Thamfu is about to come up with to harm her. Another day has passed, now there are only seven days left until the Lunar New Year. Ruby was in the kitchen engrossed in making food. Humph, she carefully scooped the food onto the plate. Noyet Lin immediately opened the curtain and said softly, Little sister Ruby, let me help you. Ruby happily replied, Ha, huh, no need, I can do it myself. Noyet Lin walked into the kitchen, rolled up her sleeves, he he, don't see that I'm a rich lady, at home I often go to the kitchen to cook. This action made Ruby surprised. However, she still felt that this was not right. Sister Van Ton was a guest, she is quite skilled in the kitchen. Ruby couldn't stop admiring her. Van Ton's vegetable chopping technique was so good. Noyet Lin is proud of herself, he he, of course, the firewood still burns. Suddenly, there was a strange flow of air passing through Noyet Lin's nose. She suddenly had a bad omen, so she immediately widened her eyes in caution. After that, Noyet Lin stepped in front of Ruby as if to protect her. Ruby's sister stood behind me. There was something unclean in the room. At this moment, Ruby remembered that the prince's tonic was smoking, and she was extremely panicked. Ruby came over to see if everything was okay, apparently she had to bring it over to the young master. Noyet Lin looked helplessly, it turned out there was nothing unclean here at all. Lam Fong was outside the palace muttering non-stop. He sat on a rock and exerted his power, wow, the heavenly source was at its peak, the top grade spirit stone seemed to have no impurities, very beneficial for cultivation, but in a short time it was impossible to break through the aura. Scene, that's right, take out your previous savings and try it out first, who knows, maybe you can get the elixir to break through the bottleneck. Next to Lam Fong is Chu Di focusing on shaping each letter. Lam Fong slowly placed his hand to touch the system. The system immediately displayed five different gifts with the word instant prize draw, um, only accumulated five times, there aren't many, just withdraw. First of all, the system congratulates you, you have won. Those five gifts are displayed in words, the first is to receive the opportunity to summon a high-level servant X1, the second is to receive a beloved whip X1, the third is to receive a BGM generator X1, next is to receive Chi Pill X1 and finally receive a package of delicious spicy sticks X1. Reading each of the above gifts, I don't understand why Lam Fong frowned, I understand summoning high-ranking servants, I understand the hot rod, I understand the gas conduction pill, I also understand the BGM generator, but, the thing Lam Fong doesn't quite understand is his beloved whip. He threw it on the ground and wondered, what the hell is this, a whip is a whip, why are the word beloved? Then wondered, what the heck is this, a whip is a whip, why are the word beloved? And then poked at the system with indignation, hey, system, explain explain, what is this for, hey, wake up, don't play dead, hey, 
Suddenly, the system shows the words, you are already a grown-up boy, believe that you will definitely find the correct way to use it, the system believes in you, Yohi. The more Lam Fong said that, the angrier he became, using his hands to punch the system, and even acting cute towards me. Lam Fong held the whip in his hand and thought, how to use it correctly. Then his eyes full of intrigue looked towards Ju Yi. Suddenly he was beaten to a pulp, he scratched his head, not understanding what was going on. After a while, he was very interested, embarrassed, blushing, as if filled with love, hit me. Chu Wei followed, hugged Lam Fong's legs tightly and begged, Fong brother, please hit me again. At the same time, Ruby brought out the bowl of rice, young master, let's eat. It's not good to let those two ladies see this scene, sir, what's going on? Lam Fong didn't know how to explain it properly so he said, it's too embarrassing, he's sick, leave him alone. The ones who were afraid were not only them, but even Noyet Lin blushed and smiled faintly, so what? On the table, in addition to the bowl of rice, there was also a bowl of medicine and rubies. He put it down and told Lam Fong, him, before eating, you should take the medicine first. Every time the word medicine is mentioned, Lam Fong is scared to death, he covered his mouth as if he wanted to vomit, don't. He was confused and confused, not understanding what was going on. Lam Fong saw this so he explained, what do you understand? Ruby knows she can't help me, so she uses this way to express herself, how can I be so cruel as to refuse her? All of a sudden, my body felt so soft and swollen, I touched myself, Fong brother, that little whip of yours felt so good on my body, it felt strangely itchy in my heart. Lam Fong felt his face turn pale when he heard it. So angry, I used a strange kick, get out of the way, are you crazy again? The reason he said was that I was just reminiscing for a bit. After finishing their meal, the two of them went to the northern town of Fatifu, first they greeted Bui Tien Ho. The man happily returned, it's Lam Fong, hum, your cultivation level has increased again. Lam Fong humbly refused to admit it, ha ha, it's not true, God blesses him too much. He brought up the old story, that's right, heaven and earth, that arson case. But the man raised his hand to indicate not to speak, then whispered in Lam Fong's ear, this is not the place to talk, go inside and talk. Lam Fong also agreed to listen, okay. Lam Fong and the men entered the closed room, Chu Wei stood outside the door to guard them so they could discuss important matters with peace of mind. The man spoke first, Lam Fong, the fire case, Zhu Wei's suspicions had been cleared, but his face didn't look very happy. This makes Lam Fong wonder, God, this is a good thing, why are you still frowning and gloomy? The man explained that for Zhu Wei, it was true, but we cannot investigate this case any further. Lam Fong panicked and wondered, could it be up there? The man's face fell, that's right, the commander personally gave the order, this is it, now everything is centered on the city gate case, unrelated matters are a waste of manpower and material resources. Lam Fong asked carefully about the matter, Tian Ho brother told the commander what we had investigated. The male servant put his hand on his chin and shyly replied, I've said it, but what does the commander mean? We didn't invite the fourth prince to testify. Could it be that based on what the two of us said, there wasn't anything wrong? Any evidence to arrest a third-rank official of the royal court, even requires the help of the great prince. Lam Fong felt it made sense, but scratched his head in frustration, damn, he couldn't refute. The man continued, yo, isn't that right, the city gate incident just appeared, the capital is already chaotic enough, if we cause more chaos, it will not be good for the two of us, nor for the great princess. After thinking for a while, Lam Fong realized that what the man said was right, two DI's suspicions were cleared up. The system suddenly announced that comedy, the host, is a system that values justice, determined not to bow to the dark forces, behind them there are people, behind you there is also a system. Investigate him, must investigate him. At this time, the system only has one choice. Lam Fong closed his eyes and thought to himself, I was about to give you a secret recipe for a small hamburger, but I caused trouble. After reading the lines proposed by the system, Lam Fong only said two complete words, his voice was extremely determined and decisive. The man was suddenly confused, his face bewildered, him, what? He clasped his hands together and expressed his opinion. Heavenly household, the great prince has always colluded with the southern kingdom, there is definitely a plot, to balance inside and outside the imperial city, I hope to continue investigate. After hearing this, the man was a bit surprised, wow, I didn't see that you had such a strong sense of justice. I saw it wrong, I saw it wrong, but actually, Lam Fong didn't want to do that at all, but once life is over, there's no turning back. For the sake of reward, I have no choice but to absolutely not learn from me, kids. After a while, the man realized it wasn't impossible to continue investigating, but we needed someone's consent. 
Lam Fong boldly asked who that person was. The man's cold, serious voice rang out in just three words, Great Princess. Having said that, the two of them immediately entered the city. Lam Fong followed the men's outfit and found this path a bit strange, so he asked, Aren't we going to her palace? With the man's understanding, he knew that the eldest princess was still in the palace handling government affairs at this time. Lam Fong looked around and said, This is the first time I entered the royal palace, but it was black and red, so serious. That's what Tu Nam said, according to legend, Thin Kin long ago was a barren and rocky land. Later, when the great Qin's ancestors were traveling here, they encountered a black dragon, so they beheaded the black dragon here, its cheek. Nurturing the earth, the ancestors felt the call from heaven to build a country here that worshipped the color black. Lam Fong now understood the reason, so that was it. Suddenly, a voice rang in the man's ear, causing him to wake up. That sound echoed from far away and reached the two of them, without meaning to. The male servant gently reminded Lam Fong, it's a concubine, hurry up and bow. The two of them knelt down to pay their respects in front of the concubine, both of them did not dare to raise their heads and just introduced themselves. Lam Fong subordinates and Bui Tu Nam visited the royal concubine. Recognizing the man's name, she excused both of them. When mentioning Bai Fai, Lam Fong immediately remembered, isn't Van Lin's mother? It was this woman who instigated the queen's assassination a few years ago. The concubine looked at Lam Fong with a kind expression and then hum. The lady slowly walked closer to Lam Fong. This action made him worry endlessly. Concubine Qin's hand gently approached him, Lam Fong, this is the first time this palace has met you, this little Van Ling girl, married to someone else, but she kept it a secret from you and didn't want others to know. Concubine Tang kindly patted Lam Fong's head, yo, Van Lin has had many opinions since she was little, and I don't know what her purpose is for doing this. As a mother, I don't have the right to tell her, so I feel sorry for you. I hope you don't blame him. Lam Fong smiled lightly to let it go, but in reality he didn't feel sorry for himself at all. And then, I smiled brightly, he he, you guys came to look for the cloud spirit, so I'm not here to hinder you anymore. Having said that, the concubine immediately left, the two of them bowed their heads and sent him off. The man patted Lam Fong's shoulder and said softly, let's go, don't look anymore. Lam Fong was a little surprised, wow, have you seen, Tian Ho, the concubine treats me very gently. The men only smiled faintly but admitted it, yes, I saw it. The backs of the two of them gradually disappeared, only the echo of their voices could be heard. Yom said so, I find what happened that year really strange. You've only met her once and you already confirmed that. A moment later, after the two of them turned their backs to leave, the concubine asked her subordinates if they had gone far. The duke who was walking next to me stood up to answer, Your Highness, I have gone far away. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief, sighs. Suddenly, I turned around and asked in a playful way, How are you? Dan Bin smiled with his eyes wide open, Yes, my lady, I'm sure your concubine senses towards you must be good. Tat Fai felt extremely refreshed, threw both hands up in the air, Very good, leave the concubine family, step by step make up with Van Lin, Ha ha, I am truly a genius. After walking for a while, Lam Fong and Du Nam finally arrived, this is the place. In front of them is the power center. The man gently and skillfully opened the door. Sunlight shines inside through the crack in the door. Inside the central hall, there are quite a few floors. Each floor has people walking around, each person holding high stacks of books in their hands. Right in the middle of the main hall, Van Lin was sitting and concentrating on reading books and writing. Lam Fong and Du Nam just watched from afar. Lam Fong was surprised when he set foot in this place, here, here, have I entered the company? The guy sounds a bit confused, a company, what is that? This is a place where soldiers are trained to take over government affairs. Lam Fong froze when he realized he had said something wrong, then he explained that this place was a bit similar to the place I was at before. The man began to feel the excitement inside Lam Fong, oh, this is so new, this is the place where the great prince advocated the policy of new prosperity and new reform. Lam Fong tilted his head and asked, what is the new policy, Thin Nguyen? To put it simply, it's nothing, it's the first change when the eldest prince is still the crown prince advocating the year of prosperity, anyway it's useless, there's no need to know. But this place has been kept, I don't know if it was his majesty's will, or your highnesses. Lam Fong knowing a little about the reason might be enough, oh, okay. As the two of them slowly went deep inside, Lam Fong thought it was a cloud spirit. After all, the ability of young people to accept new things is quite strong. The man smiled slightly and replied, he he, her highness the princess on her mother's side has vehemently opposed the new policy of prosperity, it would be better if you don't mention this matter too much. Lam Fong was quite surprised when he said that, him, does Van Lin belong to the conservative school? Unlike, clearly objected to that, the footsteps of the two of them were getting closer and closer to the princess. The two of them paid their respects to Van Lin, then she spoke first, 
hearing the guard say that you guys were looking for me, tell me, what's the matter? The man began to tell the story, your highness, it was like this. After a long time of talking, the man concluded the story with one sentence, the story was like that. Van Lin placed her hand on the book, preparing to open it, muttering, what's wrong? The book was open, she put her chin in her hand and frowned in thought. She didn't expect that the arson case that Lam Fong was accidentally involved in was related to the city gate case, and also related to the fourth brother. Lam Fong showed a disheartened expression, nothing more, but it was not considered a chance to investigate a clue, even if the next. Lam Fong had not yet finished his sentence when Van Lin spoke up. Wei Chun's words were reasonable, while we had no real evidence, arbitrarily alarming Li Tham Fu, it was inevitable that we would fight snakes and move grass, attracting attention. Of Big Brother, leading to a rivalry between the two of us is not impossible. Lam Fong thought he didn't have Van Lin's consent so he asked directly, Huh, so Miss Van Lin doesn't agree to let us continue the investigation? Contrary to Lam Fong's thoughts, Van Lin followed the direction of the two of them, of course they had to investigate. Lam Fong breathed a sigh of relief, but his face looked a little like he wanted to sulk and scare me. However, Van Lin thought we had to move to a secret place, moreover, this deep-seated clue could no longer be touched. Lam Fong wondered in surprise, but the clues pointed to him, not investigating him. Van Lin replied softly, Lam Fong, you're worried, don't forget who Li Tham Fu revealed to you. Lam Fong suddenly woke up and remembered the name Tong Van Tang. A series of questions were asked from Lam Fong, him, isn't he just a name with no real name, what's wrong with him? The men are also eager to hear the answer. Van Lin smiled faintly, you underestimated him too much. Although your previous confrontation was a little better, in the end weren't you deceived by him using childish tricks? She gave Lam Fong a bunch of books, take a look at this. Lam Fong held a book in his hand, the mobile file of Thin Kin staff. Van Lin feels extremely proud of his younger brother, this fourth brother of mine, he is still young, but his thinking mind is not small, boy, do you still remember the plan of Tan Du Sai three years ago? Perhaps this is a big deal, so the man guarantees one thing. Of course I remember, the great prince claims to have a type of elixir, which can make soldiers without the cultivation base gain after drinking it. The body training level was top-notch, but wasn't it later said that the side effects of this medicine were too great and it was discontinued? Van Lin smiled slightly, him, it's just taking a step back to make progress. This medicine helps Big Brother return to the crown prince position, how could he give up so easily, if it weren't for the medicine's body's flaws, it was supported by the minister. Please help me, maybe my father has. When Lam Fong and Du Nam heard this, they did not dare to say another word after that sentence. In the end, Van Lin decided not to talk about these things anymore. The main thing is that I discovered this, I checked the missing people in the past three years in Thin Kin from the first 100 people, until last year. Increased to 2,000 people. It seemed like the man had already guessed the reason, so his face looked very panicked, could it be? Van Lin also thought the same as the male calmly replied yes, I suspect Big Brother is using living people to research that drug. While Van Lin and Du Nam were predicting the events as well as the reasons, Lam Fong was still passionate about reading books and giving out more information, not just about the disappearances, over here prisoners on death row, prisoners in exile. Every year it seems to be ten times higher than the previous three years. Lam Fong decisively closed the book, then he seriously pondered, adding these numbers together, there were nearly ten thousand people. When the man heard this number, he gasped. Is the eldest prince crazy? If this matter were investigated, what would happen? Van Lin affirms that of course he is not crazy, and will not be found out by others, so he needs an outsider to do it, someone that no one knows and does not dare to suspect. Van Lin's eyes became sharper when reading the three words Tong Van Tang. Deeply summarizing the matter, Tu Nam felt that this could not be said clearly that His Highness the Fourth Highness was involved. Van Lin agrees with this, of course, that's why I want you to take action from Van Tang. It's best if you can't find out, if you find out. Van Lin dares to guarantee one thing, his value is much greater than Li Tham Fu. Hearing this sentence, Lam Fong and Du Nam were bewildered, their faces turned pale. The sky outside is very gloomy right now. The government door opened and the two of them gradually walked out. Van Lin clasped her hands together and breathed softly, Hmm, Li Tham Fu is nothing, he's just a small character, even if she were to find him, Tong Van Tang would cut off his hands and pray for a neat and orderly life but if he were to find him Sen Van Tang, can truly take his life. This thought grew more and more exciting in her heart. The sky that night at the fourth prince's palace was quite dark and gloomy. Not only that, the whole palace was also very dark, but in return there was a full moon shining extremely brightly. Lam Fong and his men are silently observing the actions of the guards below. After that, the two jumped off the porch and landed on the ground. They hid behind the bushes and whispered loudly to avoid being discovered by others. 
Both of them successfully snuck in. Lam Fong was a bit unbelievable because it went easier than he thought. The man asked Lam Fong, after all, the twelve figures rely on this to earn a living, what about after that, what should we do? Lam Fong recalls the old story. Does Tian Ho still remember the group of children he saw when he came here? The men are so scared that they're sweating. Do you suspect they're using those kids? Lam Fong dares to affirm that it's not wrong. They say there is kindness, but combined with the plan of Qin Xiao that you said, this feeling of kindness has changed. Suddenly, Lam Fong signaled silence. Shush, someone is coming. The silhouettes of Van Tang and Deep Thua slowly walked and talked. From afar, I heard the fourth prince angrily scold Deep Thua. Useless, useless, three years have passed. The drug's response has only reached 80s 100, this is not enough, not enough. The expression on the fourth prince's face right now is very scary. There's no way, then use numbers to make up for it. Deep Thua, instruct the person below to capture the most people. Don't worry, I just want you, just need people. Deep Thua respectfully obeys orders, immediately agrees to follow the will. Yes, the fourth prince looked at his own hand and looked indignant and terrified. His whole body felt like it was on fire. Wait there, wait for me to personally take down your altar. After saying that, the fourth prince told him to go, Deep Thua saw that and followed. Lam Fong and Du Nam decided to follow to monitor the situation. There is a moon in the sky and there are also many stars. It looks very romantic, but I don't know what will happen next. Right in front of the palace, there were two young men wearing white clothes, holding cigarettes in their hands and lamenting. Ha, huh, I haven't come up to breathe the air in a long time. What's more, the ground is about to get moldy. Lam Fong observed and asked Heavenly Guardian who they were. The guy said you also found it strange, I've met him once before. Previously as a guard in the palace, the eldest prince once brought someone dressed similarly to meet him, it seemed that he was a person from the southern kingdom. The men gave their opinion, so why directly arrest them? Lam Fong gave a sinister smile, HMPH, I have a better way. The man was momentarily confused. The blonde young man stomped on the cigarette butt and sighed and said, let's go home. Suddenly, he noticed something attacking him from behind and glanced sideways to see what was happening. However, even if he had doubts, he still couldn't react in time to the speed of Lam Fong's attack from behind. I don't know how they solved it. At this time, two young men wearing white clothes walked down to the cellar. The soldiers guarding them blamed them. Why were they so slow? The blond man gritted his teeth in anger. Huh, a doorkeeper like you still dares to nag at me. Do you believe I told his highness to use you as an experimental material? He was so scared that he lowered his voice. I, I'm just asking. Come in, come in. It turned out that the person accompanying him inside was Lam Fong, who was accompanying him in disguise. He turned around and shouted, if it's okay, what do you think? Remembering the incident, the man had solved the problem and stripped the red-haired guy's clothes. I gave Lam Fong a reasonable solution. I need a familiar person to lead the way down. I won't follow you down anymore. Please be careful, this is a photo of a waterfall, the scene can be recorded inside, everything is left to you. In the current situation, the hurdle has been smoothly passed, able to get inside as desired, the blonde young man said with a tired tone, I've already led you inside, is that possible, but Lam Fong told him not to rush, after the matter is over, I will definitely reward him. Generously for you, not long after that, he took Lam Fong to his destination, and he arrived. Before my eyes like a blue sky. Lam Fong immediately panicked when he saw it. What was this? He gave me a brief introduction. This is the underground base where the four princes cooperate with us. Mainly researching medicine type HG97 for 561 that strengthens the human body. Lam Fong picked up the test tube and observed it. Then oh, it was the elixir that your master once talked about. He wanted to tell Lam Fong that that medicine was really nothing. Mainly it did not conform to the rules of this world. So he had to choose a mixed medicine. If it was in the Bok world, why would he bother? So complicated. Lam Fong glared with unrelenting surprise, hm, you said it was the Bok world. He proudly told me all about this incident, our place of origin, a holy land of science, technology and innovation, but we still haven't seen it. People here call us men of heaven, this name is hard to hear. We always call ourselves book people, and we don't know how to translate at first. Lam Fong was surprised, but not without wonder. Oh, what did you mean by that rule just now? He stroked his chin, thought for a moment and said, Oh, this, each world has its own rules of operation. Just like in Qianyuan continent, science and technology are rejected, the rules of this world surround the spirit. If we move forward, we will walk on the path of individual evolution, but I heard from Bok that this world is a small world of fragments, not complete, so if we can cultivate to a certain level, we will not be able to break through. Break again, Lam Fong immediately thought, 
Chenyuan Continent is a small world of scrap metal, and the level of cultivation is limited. Thinking about it, Lam Fong asked a probing question, so in your opinion, the science and technology here cannot work, how can your energy problem be solved? He felt a little interested, the master's question is qualified, the barbarians outside will only see that what we use is evil magic, in fact everything. He held a green object in his hand and said that everything depends on this, spirit stone, if this world is dominated by spirit energy, we can use spirit stone as energy to explore science. Then, we call it scientific spirituality, that spirit stone sparkled extremely and looked very beautiful. Lam Fong really can't imagine, so your current headquarters is here. He replied bluntly, of course not, this is just an experimental base in cooperation with the Fourth Highness, I don't know where the main base is located, we have to block our perception when going out. Having said that, Lam Fong can't ask any further questions, well, that's fine. As I walked, I said I had arrived, I'm here, in front is the experimental area, from here I won't be able to go inside anymore, so please be careful of yourself. Lam Fong slowly opened the door, briefly observed and replied, I know, you go to the elevator and wait for me. When I rush out, you start the elevator. He immediately obeyed. Yes, master, step inside, the door is immediately closed. The question remains, what is this? Before Lam Fong's eyes was the appearance of three strangers. Suddenly there was a hand placed gently on Lam Fong's shoulder. That person did not know that inside that outfit had been replaced by another person, so he said, hey, Rhodes, what are you doing here? Don't hurry inside, the experiment is about to start. Lam Fong just tilted his head a bit and replied simply, oh, oh, okay. He slowly followed and went in, experimenting, good opportunity, just took a photo as evidence. The number of people participating in this experiment is enough. Let's begin. Everyone adjusted their clothes, covered their faces to ensure safety, and the experiment began. The remaining people shouted together loudly and clearly. Ahead, the secret door is gradually opened. That was the appearance of the boy holding the candy calling the original Lam Fong. Lam Fong's prediction was not wrong, indeed, it was the group of children he met yesterday. Another door opened, followed by an extremely ferocious beast with its mouth wide open waiting to hunt. Looking at the way they hungrily looked like they had been starved for a long time, it struggled and screamed continuously, the eyes of a wild predator began to appear. Everyone looked at it and couldn't help but be surprised. Having injected this baby with the latest version 8.0 HG974561, coming back alive should not be a problem, the main thing is whether he can maintain his reason or not. The blue-haired young man's eyes widened. Is it a star wolf? It's equivalent to a nine-level monk's data sheet. What can this child do? Yo, indeed, this medicine HG974561 is absolutely good for the body's growth rate, but the brain cannot endure this process. Lam Fong just silently stood behind and observed the situation, feeling uneasy and unable to do anything. These guys, a dying child in front of them, were even discussing the experiment's data, how many people they had used. To test the medicine, I could do it without any emotion. They were still delighted with the situation in front of them, admiring the body of the Chen Yuan. That's right, we are the third generation of people born here, but we are still excluded by the rules of this mainland land. That ferocious dog just kept getting closer to the boy. At this point, he could only slowly crawl back in absolute panic, trying to use sweet words to think he would tame it. Dog, dog. Good, the guy with blue hair and glasses standing outside suddenly said coldly, okay, let's start. The rest immediately followed, clearly. After pressing the start button, every wire in the body suddenly worked crazily, tightening like that. This pain made the boy unable to grip the candy anymore, it fell directly to the ground and broke into many pieces. The boy hugged his chest tightly and kept screaming, his chest, his chest hurt so much. He knelt down trying to resist this extreme pain, the power of the medicine was seeping deeper and deeper into his heart and liver, his body, it hurt, it hurt so much. After a while the medicine penetrates into the body, the body gradually becomes stronger, the chest expands, it is no longer like a child. From then on, the clothes were also torn apart. The initially ferocious dog, upon seeing this scene, also became humble and afraid. The boy's body now becomes a tall, muscular adult version. However, that dog still stubbornly attacked, it screamed ferociously and rushed in. Unfortunately, the boy squeezed his neck so tightly that he couldn't resist. At this moment, to the boy, the evil dog was just a small creature that could be destroyed single-handedly without spending too much effort. It could only scream in pain. The boy decisively used his hands to strangle the dog to death, blood splattering everywhere. The green-haired guy wearing glasses was surrounded by fresh blood, he seemed very satisfied with this. Then came to a conclusion, everyone, finally today, 
I announced that the discovery of HG974561 was once again a new high creativity, reaching 90 to 100. They are constantly rejoicing, long live, hoo hoo hoo, three years, do you know how I lived these for years? Finally, finally, one step closer to victory. Lam Fong was indignant, not happy, but also did not show his attitude, HMPH, just cheer, this is your last time. The green-haired guy wearing glasses accidentally saw Lam Fong's face and was surprised, hmm, looks like Mr. Rhodes is not very happy. Calling my name, Lam Fong felt a bit unfamiliar, huh, what about me? He started to have some doubts about Lam Fong, so he told him about Rhodes. Rhodes is 1m65 tall, weighs 140, the left shoulder is high and the right is low, how did you manage to gain 15 centimeters in just a moment, and even treat it? High and low shoulder disease. Lam Fong was not afraid at all, boldly took off his clothes and smiled, hmm, I've been discovered, I originally wanted to use my identity as a colleague to live with you until the end, but in return comes suspicion. I got rid of that outfit, inside was the human outfit of the twelve forms, in Lam Fong's hand he held up a card, then no more pretending, I am the bodyguard of the twelve forms of Great Qin Country, I post here, the other group of people froze, TSK, then what? Lam Fong happily replied, Humph, you bunch of idiots don't even have a level of cultivation, right? Even if the guards come, it will take time. If you know how to be reasonable, you should quickly give up and be tied up. Suddenly, Lam Fong realized that there was a direct stream of power shooting across Lam Fong, causing his hair to break off a bit. The blue-haired guy wearing glasses stood tall in front of Lam Fong, holding a weapon in his hand. Why do you think I walked in front of you? Because at this distance, 7M, it took you 2 seconds to rush here, and I using this gun only takes 0.5 seconds. Lam Fong smiled a little in a friendly way, no, no need, say something slowly. The outside is different, but the inside is different, try the fart, of course we know the gun within 7 steps is both fast and accurate. Seeing that Lam Fong could no longer resist, he told him to make a wise choice and then ordered his subordinates to arrest him. The other boy standing inside respectfully could calmly call out two words, brother. This made him very surprised, he turned to look, what? This unintentionally distracted him. Lam Fong feels this is a good opportunity. Just as he was about to attack, he opened fire. However, Lam Fong could easily dodge the move. At this moment, he seemed to have more strength, unexpectedly he still remembered me, brother. Lam Fong used magic moves to attack him. In the blink of an eye, he was in front of him and took the gun in his hand and gave it here. Things weren't going so easily, a stream of green power was suddenly released. This made Lam Fong unexpected, damn it. Lam Fong then unleashed a powerful blow, make him move away. He felt so hard that the outside researcher worriedly ran over to ask, Doctor, are you okay? He still calmly replied, I'm fine, that stream of power came from Deep Thua. Indeed, not killing you that day was a mistake. The object from Deep Thua's move was clinging to Lam Fong's shoulder, but he still calmly smiled and replied, Really, I don't believe it. Lam Fong then turned around to confront Deep Thua resolutely. Even though Lam Fong was approaching, Deep Thua still stood there, not dodging at all. It turns out he has a protective layer, he affirms one thing, but today you must die here. At this time, Deep Thua began to resist, causing Lam Fong to collapse like the sky. Deep Thua's technique is gradually seeping into Lam Fong's body, causing him to panic in surprise, his eyes widened, wow. While he was caught off guard, Deep Thua could knock Lam Fong away with a light wave. He was thrown hard against the wall. That weight caused the wall to also be broken into pieces. Taking this opportunity, Deep Thua advised the doctor to take precautions and let the research staff retreat through the secret passage first. The doctor immediately agreed, yes, Lam Fong's body was as cold as ice at this time, blood was still lingering on the corner of his mouth, horrifying, so cold, this, this is cold poison, it's not good. Lam Fong had no choice but to ask for help from the system. He gritted his teeth and said the words, system, start the BGM transmitter. Immediately, the system dinged, blared, and a burning torch appeared right at his feet. Lam Fong was a bit surprised because it was the first time he saw this tool. What is this? Don't worry, he immediately used it to warm his body and heart so that blood could circulate normally again. Deep Thua stroked his beard and turned to ask, Lam Fong, what's wrong with you? The feeling of cold poison penetrating is not pleasant, let the old man make you comfortable, rather than you freezing to death. He didn't know that Lam Fong was able to detoxify himself thanks to the system, so he was so arrogant. Lam Fong smiled confidently and replied, in addition, he also intended to provoke the other person, hum hum, ha ha ha, Deep Thua, less words, whatever tricks you have, just use them. This made Deep Thua extremely angry. He frowned and frowned in discomfort. You really don't know what to do, if you want to die. He used a new move again, 
This time it seemed to be much heavier than the previous ones, his eyes clearly expressed the two words of indignation. He used a new move again, this time it seemed to be much heavier than the previous ones, his eyes clearly expressed the two words of indignation. A fierce poisonous snake appeared right after Deep Thur unleashed his move, I will send you down to the palace. Lam Fong still calmly sat in one place using his own strength, his body seemed to be on fire, he was strong because of him, the cool breeze gently swept through the hills and mountains. He was stubborn and let him be stubborn, the bright moon illuminated the big river. That poisonous snake continued to attack Lam Fong, but Lam Fong still concentrated on accumulating strength. And then, Lam Fong shouted decisively, he was cruel, he was cruel, one breath of anger was enough for me. That scream could unexpectedly destroy the poisonous snake into many pieces. Deep Thua did not believe that this could happen like that. He was so surprised that he was sweating, how could this be possible? Lam Fong proudly stood up flashy and confident, that's all, it's not enough to see. The system kept going on and on non-stop. Deep Thua said he was arrogant, but in his heart he couldn't help but wonder, what's going on, how did this kid's aura become so strong-willed and positive? Lam Fong started to worry because the song the system gave was just over two minutes. If I can't defeat him within this time, I'll have to leave. And so, Lam Fong quickly attacked to defeat the opponent as quickly as possible. Deep Thua did not give up, the two sides continued to confront each other. These two terrifying powers fight each other like water fights fire. At the same time, it was very quiet outside. The man was still watching the other guy, his anxiety began to rise, it's been a while, what happened? At that moment, a massive stream of people rushed in, quickly, the man immediately hid behind the bushes to investigate the situation, yo, things are really going in the worst direction, everything is within the great princess's prediction. The man took out a firecracker from his body, then threw it straight into the sky to announce the news. Fireworks were being displayed in that bustling city, people were bustling with joy, suddenly there was a word, perhaps giving news to Van Lin. Indeed, Van Lin too stood at the window looking out and saw everything. She smiled slightly, hum hum, and then spoke up, old man, take my orders to mobilize the left guard army. The old man quickly obeyed the order. On the other hand, Lai Tham Fu and Lai Fong were also waiting for some news. Lai Fong asked, sir, is this okay? Deeply looked into the distance and said, it's just the beginning. Van Long also looked forward to it, thinking about it, willing to contribute for his highness. The flirtatious young man is drinking tea and there is also a woman waiting next to him. What happened? Look, the bright moon is the fireworks of twelve figures. He was a little interested, who knows, but if these fireworks explode, someone will die, someone will die, someone will laugh. Returning to the situation on Lam Fong's side, their attacks continuously broke everything in the laboratory. Lam Fong frantically used his strength to attack, the aura surrounding him grew bigger and bigger, quite old man. Deep Thua's eyes were as green as lightning, you arrogant brat, die. The two streams of power collided, creating a roaring explosion. It seems that the blue energy source seemed stronger, causing the soil and rocks to be plowed up. It didn't stop there, the door was also crushed by the force. The sound of people's footsteps mixed with loud voices made the atmosphere much noisier than usual. Hurry, hurry to the backyard. The subordinates each held a long sword in their hands. While running, they suddenly stopped because they discovered something strange before their eyes. That strange thing came from men's clothes, he was hiding behind the rock in front of them, secretly thinking and worrying about Lam Fong's safety, Lam Fong hadn't come up yet, he had to help him hold on a bit. Having said that, the man immediately pulled out his sword, then use your ability to shoot upward like a spark, causing all eyes to look up. The blade is extremely sharp. He used the force to jump very high and then straightly swung the sword that had accumulated power towards the opponent. That move was red flame fire dance. As soon as the slash ended, they were thrown everywhere. On Lam Fong's side, it seemed like he had easily dealt with Deep Thua. He stood tall in the middle of the rubble left behind after the battle, then coughed a few times, luckily used a big move before the match ended. As soon as he finished speaking, BGM immediately shouted loudly. Lam Fong did not believe that Deep Thua could be defeated so easily. He looked around and called out, Hey, Deep Thua, don't pretend to be dead, I know you're still alive. Deep Thua heard him take a deep breath and then made a wow sound. He slowly walked out, one hand on his chest, his clothes were also tattered. Wow, the five internal organs and six organs felt like they were on fire and destroyed. There is such a method in the world that is so strong in yin and yang and strong, I have never heard of it. Lam Fong smiled softly and said logically, hum, the world is vast, nothing is impossible, you have been in the capital for too long, you have long been separated from the outside world. On the outside, he was smiling and talking, but in his heart, he was extremely uneasy. Damn it, even the Nine Dragon and Nine Yang God attack couldn't kill him. He's alive and well. Deep Thua compliments Lam Fong for his quick tongue. 
Although I don't know how a top-level natural source like you can overcome the aura in such a short time, can you still do that move a second time? Lam Fong frowned uncomfortably when he was asked such a difficult question. This old man is not easy to fool. Lam Fong had to use his last move. He pretended to distract Deep Thua. Yo, why are you here? Deep Thua heard that and immediately turned around to see. What, your highness? In the blink of an eye, Lam Fong disappeared without leaving any trace. It turned out that an old man like Deep Thua had been deceived like that. He asked in confusion, where was he? Although he was already injured, the anger in his body became even greater, brat. He teased me five times and seven times, he was extremely bitter at Lam Fong. Yet Deep Thua still insisted on chasing, chasing, and killing, I have to kill you. In front of him, suddenly there was a person standing and waving, Lam Fong wondered, HM, who is waving at me? It turned out to be the blonde boy, he stood waiting for Lam Fong and shouted, Master, Master, this side, this side. Lam Fong rushed over and grabbed his collar, making him scared and surprised. It's good that you're not dead yet, and you're also a witness. Suddenly, Lam Fong stopped and observed for a moment. Then I realized that right before my eyes was the exit. He affirmed that there was no danger, so he was happy and confidently spoke up. Lam Fong I was back again. The other guy was dragged by Lam Fong and spun around like a pinwheel until he was dizzy. Soon, the two of them went out smoothly. Outside, drops of blood flowed down the tip of the sword. The man had single-handedly dealt with the soldiers, now there were only a few standing in front to challenge him. The man's sharp eyes flashed and glanced back. Thanks to that, I saw that Lam Fong was safe and happily opened his mouth. Luckily you came out, otherwise there would have been a few more unjust souls under my hands. Lam Fong walked over and asked, Heaven, what's going on? The man, still in a fighting stance, replied, I have already sent the signal, I believe the princess will come here immediately, now we just have to see how we can escape. Lam Fong still has to confront them, not knowing how long it will last. Luckily, the sound of horses running was heard. The horses ran at a very fast speed. That was the great princess Van Lin and her subordinates coming to support Lam Fong. Her expression seemed very determined, faster, a little faster. Right at this moment, a weak arm reached into the door. That arm belongs to Deep Thua. He saw the entire fight between the men and the guys. The news was spread by them. The underground base could no longer keep it. His plotting expression appeared sinister. He was holding something in his hand. Perhaps something bad was about to happen, so he could only. He used one finger to press the switch button. What will happen in this underground base? Next, five seconds countdown left. Five seconds quickly passed. The place immediately exploded in fire. The fire broke out more and more. Soil and rocks were scattered everywhere from the fire. The fight had to stop before that explosion. Deep Thua quickly stroked his beard happily and said very contemptuously, Next, I should send you two on your way. There are always dangers around Lam Fong and Du Nam. Not long after Lam Fong escaped, he had to prepare to confront Deep Thua again. The leaves on the tree slowly fall. Deep Yen accumulates an extremely large amount of power in his hands. After that, he directly attacked the two of them. Seeing this, the man also started to attack, his sharp eyes staring at the other person, the flames burning like circles on the sword. The man is ready to stand up to receive Deep Thua's moves, but it doesn't seem to be going very well. Then, it was Lam Fong's turn to attack. He jumped high and waved his hand to prepare to strike. The old man took over. Unfortunately, Deep Thua was able to hold Lam Fong's arm, making him unable to help but be surprised. A single blow punched Lam Fong and sent him flying far away. This force of power was so terrifying that he and both of them were seriously injured. Lam Fong dragged his body along the ground and then crashed into the cliff. He clutched his chest and coughed, no, that's not possible. Men's clothes are no longer stable. Deep Thua came closer to them, intending to ask provocatively, what's wrong, continue using the technique from before, I'm waiting. Lam Fong calmly said, you, you wait for me another 15 minutes. However, Deep Thua didn't care much about Lam Fong's words, him, he was already dead and still talking about it. Lam Fong gritted his teeth and thought, originally didn't want to use it, but there was no other way. Lam Fong decided to summon a high-ranking servant. Immediately a woman appeared holding a bow and arrow, softly speaking two times, cold cold. That bow and arrow emitted a huge stream of power. It came as fast as a tornado, spinning in the direction of the leaves, making him confused, hmm. Before asking the question, Deep Thua had to take a defensive stance. The person who helped Lam Fong turned out to be Van Lin. She slowly withdrew her sword, it seemed she arrived just in time. Lam Fong and his men's clothes were all over the ground. Looking up at her, the great princess, was it Van Lin? No matter what happens, Van Lin still seriously praises them. Lam Fong to Nam, you guys have done a great job, leave the rest to me. After being hit by an arrow, Deep Thua was in extreme pain. He realized that this was the legendary phoenix ring of Dong Lam Citadel's heavenly technique. 
Its power was indeed extraordinary. Van Lin resolutely challenged him, Deep Thua, I'm here, do you still want to take action? Cross your arms and be tied, I will spare you and not die. Deep Thua was not afraid at all, and even dared to ask her back, the eldest princess was only at the peak of heaven, did not bring an assistant, and dared to speak like that. Then he thought to himself, the underground base was buried, kill Lam Fong and that researcher. Van Lin is extremely confident, you are injured, and you still lack aura, I am more than capable of dealing with you. Regardless of who the opponent is in front of him, Deep Thua only focuses on Lam Fong, so what, what about him? He rushed straight forward, making Lam Fong unable to react in time, only panicking. As soon as his arm lightly touched Lam Fong's body, there was immediately a tight cut down the middle of his arm. Half of his arm was cut off, blood dripped down, Deep Thua painfully touched the injured area, the energy condensed, at this time he knew that the cloud spirit was already in the realm of energy. Van Lin was happy when she saw Deep Thua's appearance like this, why, so surprised? For the time being, Deep Thua just stood still and said a few words to Van Lin, worthy of being a great princess, it seems that this aura has been in the aura for a while now, I have been fooled by you. Van Lin looked straight at him and replied, if you want to blame me, blame you for disregarding my words too much. I will not shoot arrows without aim. Deep Thua was accumulating spiritual energy while blaming himself. Indeed, you are our biggest obstacle. If we can eliminate you here. After hearing that, Van Lin frowned and asked again, what do you mean by obstacle? He once again rushed forward, each time he decided to challenge, he became even more desperate, said less, and died. The two sides continuously fought each other, landslides and rocks were thrown everywhere after each move. While fighting, Deep Thua thought, I can deal with this girl easily, she is deliberately consuming my aura, wants to capture me alive, damn it. His eyes widened, then he made a decision to take a risk. Yin Ling's sword slash continued towards Deep Thua's arm that had just been slashed. However, he used tricks to suppress her sword. Deep Thua shouted loudly the name of the move he was about to use, wearing his jade hand, his remaining intact arm gradually touching Van Lin's body. Yet she could still smile like she was the winner. Actually, cloud spirit can resist, I never said I only have sword skills. There are strong people and there are stronger people. Deep is full of experience so he is sure what he should do is right, so I don't think I can defeat you head on, you are too young. Soon, Deep Thua appeared from behind the cloud spirit. She also did not expect this, what? The red leaves that were before her eyes quickly disappeared. He confidently said that it was over. In a situation like this, the cloud spirit could no longer resist, her eyes widened in absolute surprise. Van Lin didn't know what to do next, she could only stand there silently watching that arm gradually move towards her. Her eyes suddenly became very angry, her irises turned orange yellow. A fiery explosion occurred. This caused people as well as rocks and soil to be thrown all over each other. Tu Nam and Lam Fong also had to try to resist the weight of this rage. Lam Fong was extremely worried about Van Lin. Deep Thua was close to achieving his goal, but was also thrown out by that phase, and his remaining arm was also severed. He fell so hard from above that it felt like an earthquake. His whole body was lying on the ground, filled with smoke. Van Lin was angry and used the first layer of water armor to trick me. If he was a normal person, he would definitely be killed by you at this time. She pointed the sword in front of Deep Thua and expressed regret, your opponent is me. Two streams of blood flowed from the corner of Deep Thua's mouth. He coughed a few times, hum, it's not that I lost to you, but I lost because of your heavenly technique. Van Lin did not deny this at all, so she asked Deep Thua if there was anything else left to say. He felt regretful and shed tears. It's a pity that he couldn't destroy you, nor could he meet your highness for the last time. Hearing these words, Van Lin seemed to be a little moved, unable to say a sentence. Suddenly, the fourth prince ran from afar and called Tong Van Lin. She coldly glanced at him. The fourth prince shouted loudly, I thought it was someone who dared to be rude to the royal palace, it turned out to be you, who allowed you to barge in without any reason, and even kill my guard, I must report you in front of my father. King, Van Lin breathed a sigh of relief, then said in a strong voice, Tong Van Lin, I have come personally, you still don't know why. I'll act there for someone to see, tell you, the story of you and Song Van Long colluding with the southern kingdom has already been sent out. The fourth prince was startled, you, what are you talking about, I don't know. And then, he immediately ordered his subordinates to quickly capture this woman for me. However, none of them dared to do anything, they could only look at each other in fear and sweat. At that moment, the soldiers stepped inside one by one. Setting up troops to work, everyone immediately put down their weapons, folded their hands, and agreed to be bound, otherwise they would kill without mercy. The subordinates immediately obeyed, everyone did as the army commanded, this made the four princes feel uneasy, looked at them and shouted loudly, you, you guys. He stationed his troops in front of the fourth prince, then made a request, inviting him to follow us on a trip. 
After everything was temporarily resolved, Van Lin came to express her gratitude to Tu Nam and Lam Fong. This time thanks to you, it's been hard work. Lam Fong suddenly remembered something, that's right, I also caught a witness, that was the blonde guy, but he had already lost his voice, an ice block from Deep Thua's move stabbed him in the middle of his forehead, the three of them stood looking at that corpse in hopelessness, not expecting Deep Thua to fight with me and still not forget, unfortunately, he followed the wrong person, Deep Thua was sad and gloomy, being pinned and forgotten, the fourth prince looked towards Deep Thua, then approached, still not forgetting to blame him for being useless, blame all the sins on Deep Thua, it's all on you, on you, useless slave. He used his foot to give a painful kick to Deep Thua's face, seeing that the fourth prince kept attacking others, the army forced him to leave, but his mouth kept cursing, he was a waste, a waste. Deep Thua collapsed on the ground, his eyes were white, and his mouth was open. Lam Fong gave a contemptuous smile, Lam Fong patted the soldier's shoulder and said, brother, leave the matter of escorting the fourth prince to me. At first he didn't intend to agree, but from behind he saw the princess nodding so he replied, then I'll leave it to you. Having said that, all the soldiers left, it's been hard. Lam Fong put his hand on the fourth prince but he repeatedly responded, take your dirty hands away, don't touch me. Lam Fong looked at you with threatening words, shut your mouth, don't force me to beat you tonight. That night, at the palace, there is a royal highness who is focusing on cultivating spiritual energy. At that moment, the eunuch hurriedly ran to the palace to report. As he ran in regardless, someone held a sword to block him, causing the eunuch to step back in panic. That person is your highness's junior brother. He said, your majesty is cultivating, so if you have anything to tell me, it's okay. And then, the eunuch came and whispered in the ear of his highness's close disciple. Everything has been conveyed to my brother's ears, I know, go back down. The eunuch obediently left, yes, the spiritual power that his highness was cultivating gradually dissipated, then he let out a sigh. Your highness asked, is there any news? Junior brother turned his nose and replied, well, Tong Van Lin personally led the team, Tong Van Tang probably wouldn't run away. His Highness smiled lightly, as expected of her, cold and stern, not giving the opponent a chance to react. What about Van Long's side? He said that he had met a few noble people. The Shadow Guard did not dare to get too close, and he did not know exactly what he said. After that, the junior brother coldly advised him, Why are you doing these things? It's better to put your time into cultivating and break through the true essence realm sooner or later. Is the longevity you're worried about no longer a problem? On that dark full moon night, the two of them were still discussing important matters. His Highness smiled softly and replied, He he, true essence scene, you are also optimistic, I am satisfied if I can maintain the compressed air. The junior brother frowned with dissatisfaction. It seems that the energy technique itself cannot help you. The spiritual energy on your body is still being gnawed away. His eyes seemed to glow, and the black gas in the sea of air spread again. Your Highness feels that, based on speculation, the balance between spiritual energy and darkness cannot be maintained for too long, we both understand. The junior brother gave his opinion, maybe go to Dong Lam Citadel again, and see if there are any other techniques or elixirs that can help you. His Highness, however, nonchalantly sat in the chair and then ignored and left. His Highness expressed with a gloomy face, this is a rejection of the law, it is not something external things can solve, junior brother does not need to waste his efforts on me anymore. Melancholy eyes clearly appeared, my death is only a matter of time. Having said this, the junior brother has no more words to say. His Highness spoke touching words for his junior brother. Junior brother, if you can be with me in the final journey, I am very satisfied. The younger brother thought that he should tell the senior sister, but was immediately rejected by His Highness, saying there was no need. I have already made mistakes with her, how can I tell her that I am about to die? It will only make her more depressed, just let her forget me. No matter what sentence he said, his junior brother was speechless and could only stand there motionless. His Highness suddenly thought a lot and then shyly asked, Junior brother, do you regret helping me? He calmly and bluntly replied, No, since you have made a choice, you must move forward, that's how I am, my swordsmanship is also like that. He immediately regained his serious expression and asked in a cold voice. On the contrary, after so many years of nourishing such poison, have you made up your mind? Soon, before the Lunar New Year, you will be able to see the difference. Before leaving, Junior Brother finished a sentence, clearly we are family, we will come back and forth, in the end it will still be the Emperor who is heartless, I'm out of here. At this time, there was only His Highness alone in the palace, this place looked really cold and lonely. Hearing his junior brother say that, he didn't know how to answer in the right way or in a reasonable way. Outside, everyone was talking loudly, hearing that the four princes had been imprisoned. Some people think that they already knew that this time the princess was cruel. Some people were wondering, not knowing what the prince's side would react to, said that because he colluded with the remnants of the southern kingdom, he was imprisoned. 
The other person after listening felt a bit unreasonable, what about the southern kingdom? On the outside, it was said that it was strictly forbidden, but in reality, everyone in the house didn't have some new toys from the southern kingdom. This was everyone's business. Everyone knew, but didn't say anything, why was the princess? Another person said that this time was different. Remember the plan two years ago that Chin Ruisha once mentioned, in order to repair the elixir, the four princes used people to test the medicine, causing many people to lose their lives, and more I also know that the elixir has really been created, who knows, maybe this position of reserve will. Right at this moment, Duke Wei and Wei Yangfeng appeared to express their feelings after hearing the rumors. Prime Minister, after all, his fourth highness was also thrown dirty water by his own people because of the great frequency. Like that, not so good. The person who was talking earlier was Prime Minister Lai Keat. He stroked his beard and laughed mockingly. He he, dirty water, isn't that true? Wei Yangfeng then asked, You are also people who strive for unity, you must understand that once the elixir research is successful, the overall organization of the soldiers will be improved, and the death rate will also decrease a lot. Could it be that in order to overthrow the great prince, are you willing to abandon the great cause of unification? Lai Keat still calmly replied, Heh, the crime assigned by the Duke of Wei is too big, my old man can't bear it. Unifying the world is of course important, but it must also be done slowly, how can we blindly embrace war? Could it be that the Duke of Wei doesn't understand the principle that no matter how big the country is, it must die? In recent years, your majesty has fought everywhere. Let the two countries cut off land, the country expanded thousands of miles, but also forced the two countries to form an alliance to fight against Great Qin, the army is prosperous, and will not be inferior to Great Qin. It is impossible not to postpone the offensive, but in the country there is also a rest for the sake of things, who wants his majesty to reform the country, abolishing the nine ministries to build the six ministries, attacking the powerful sects, building upholding the religion everywhere, establishing a standing army, recruiting soldiers, and regularly convening forced labor, the people were extremely miserable. If you can really think about things like your majesty, it is not necessarily the path of a strong country, but it will be difficult for a whole generation, but the courtiers have not decided yet because of the military position into two factions, constantly attacking each other, neglecting politics, even if they're not of the same faction, they become nothing. It is not right to say that it is right, the political order is not thoroughly implemented, even if the national policy is better, it must be implemented. Is this the path of a strong nation? My old man seems to have seen it through, the army reserve is uncertain, the country is still uncertain. This story must have an end today. The Duke of Wei asked again, and affirmed, must he be the eldest princess, why couldn't he be the eldest prince, clearly knowing that when a woman holds power, the country will not be dignified, in the end, it is just covetousness. Only merit. After listening, Lai Keat lowered his head and did not want to answer this question. Right now, your majesty bids a price. Everyone paid their respects and visited his majesty. The emperor took his position, then calmed everyone down. They shouted in unison, thanking his majesty. The emperor offered to ask first, today's court session, do you have something to discuss? Lai Keat immediately replied, your majesty, I have something to tell you. The fourth prince, Song Van Tang, colluded with the remnants of the southern kingdom, researched the forbidden elixir, disregarded the lives of the people, and brought it out to test the medicine. Please, your majesty. Punish severely, to deter. The argument began to take place, it was unreasonable, it was clear that someone wanted to harm your fourth highness. What do you say about rape? You have all the evidence, why are you still arguing? Hum, it's just evidence, who knows if you people from the princess faction made it up or not. You talk nonsense. This argument was really noisy when divided into two sides, the eunuch shouted loudly asking everyone to be quiet. Seeing that, the emperor decided that if you disagreed, then call someone on the phone to inquire. The eunuch next to him complied, yes, legend has it that Princess Tong Van Lin, 4th Prince Tong Van Tang, concubine Lam Fong, and 12,000 guardians Bui Du Nam meet with each other. They entered the main hall one after another. All four people walked inside as soon as they were summoned. Song Van Lin paid his respects to his father and his majesty. Van Tang glanced at them with a puffy face and then cried. The emperor spoke softly, calmed down, and asked what had happened. Van Lin showed everyone the entire incident recorded by Lam Fong when he first entered the laboratory. Please watch, this is the recording last night using a photo of the waterfall, a short video. It shows for a moment the focus on the scene where the boy is given drugs. That part was carefully watched by everyone. Van Lin glanced at Van Tang, this was evidence that Van Tang colluded with the southern kingdom and killed people. His expression was extremely worried right now. Van Lin bowed her head and asked her father to consider it. The emperor also did not expect things to come to this level. Inside the palace, 
the atmosphere is quite tense over the incident, yet the sky outside is still clear blue and rays of sunlight shine into the city. The emperor pursed his lips with disappointment, then lightly touched his chin and made a decision. Well, the evidence is irrefutable, the great king used the law to rule the world, the prince committed the crime of being treated like a commoner, the crime of deceiving the king, so he should be beheaded. When Van Lin heard this sentence, he was extremely frightened even though he was the one who denounced Van Tang. Wei Yi Youngfeng gritted his teeth and frowned in fear, as if hearing earth-shattering news. Lai Keep bowed his head sadly. Other ministers also took turns pleading with the emperor. Your fourth highness is of royal blood, how can you be beheaded easily, there is no precedent among dynasties, please revoke the order. Please consider, your majesty, this is a prince, a prince. If your majesty wants to behead the four princes, you must step over my body first. Please consider, the words asking for his majesty's consideration were constantly resounding, Lam Fong thought to himself and felt that this court meeting was very noisy, but the emperor was also really evil, his own son, saying beheading is beheading, but this is also the reason why Qin can hang and beat So Han. Right now, the system displays, the system has completed leveling up. The sounds of pleading kept ringing in my ears, asking your majesty to consider. Lam Fong still did not forget to blame, damn, why did you just appear in the system now? Where did you go when you died last night? The system immediately said the reason, because last night it sensed the fluctuations of the divinity's abnormality. To avoid being detected by it, the system automatically entered the upgrade shutdown state, and now the upgrade is complete. Lam Fong felt confused so he asked again, divine personality, was discovered, what does the system mean, please explain a bit. After checking, I found out last night's divine discovery number is FX741789, the mechanical Bok main god plane remnants of the divine personality, its function is to prevent interference with the law of cultivation of the Qianyuan plane, in the area limited operation of mechanical laws. When the plane invades the plane, a trace will be left by the plane. Bok civilization uses the signal of the trace as the original, creating a measurement and inspection system that can check the remaining intruders. As the protector of the identity, after the system leveled up, the host and system were not warned in advance about being discovered. Lam Fong sighed and reminded me, if it's such an important matter, I'd like you to check it from the beginning next time. After that, he showed a sinister smile full of conspiracy and calculation. According to you, this was your mistake. You took the initiative to turn off the phone without saying anything. It hurt me to deal with the intruder last night. The enemy is strong, the tricks and tools are exhausted, shouldn't you give some compensation? After listening, the system was silent for a long time. After hearing the emperor's decision, Van Lin spoke up, the emperor's father and Van Tang were still minors, there were still many places where the punishment was unknown. Please treat me with leniency. The emperor started to get frustrated, just sighed and asked, what do you think we should do? Van Lin gave his opinion, detaining the fourth brother is fine, invite a famous master to teach him, so that he can reform his evil ways. Tong Van Tang strongly said there was no need, which made Van Lin quite surprised. He said coldly, Song Van Lin, there is no need for you to pretend to be a good person. HMPH, the law comes from the army, the monarchy is tyrannical, the emperor wants to kill me, then kill me, after all you will kill your own queen, killing another son is no different. Duke Wei Yi frowned, then walked over and gave Van Tang a slap, you bastard, you're talking nonsense. Blood was dripping onto the floor, but he still kept smiling. Van Tang carefully wiped the remaining drops of blood from his mouth, do you think I don't know? I have been investigating for so long, how could I rely on that stupid female concubine to kill my mother-in-law? Of course the person who can do everything is. Without letting Van Tang say who that person was, Duke Wei punched him again, telling him to shut up. He clasped his hands together to report, Your Majesty, Song Van Tang slandered in front of the main hall, spoke rudely, I was suddenly impatient and took action to teach you, please punish me. The Emperor said coldly, It's okay, the Duke of Wei is loyal, I can see it, but if this child is willing to stretch his neck and die, now three days later, he will behead the public in the Imperial City. In the end, the Emperor still gave death to Van Tang. The Duke of Wei was surprised and speechless. He intended to continue begging, but the Emperor got up and left. The eunuch outside shouted loudly, breaking the tide. Van Lin turned to glance at Lai Keet. Her expression was extremely angry. Lam Fong kept laughing all the time, his mouth was drooling. The male figure found it strange, so he turned around and called out his name, Lam Fong, Lam Fong, the male figure was currently carrying Van Tang in his hand. The man wondered, why are you laughing so stupidly? The meeting has already ended. Lam Fong was surprised, huh, what's wrong, what's wrong? The male servant replied helplessly, the first time he went to the palace he was absent-minded, there was no one left, his majesty had passed away. 
Lam Fong asked more questions, oh, how to judge, whether to pull the eldest prince off the horse. No, Tong Van Tang was speechless, said nothing, made his majesty leave in anger, and even beheaded him. Oh, is that so? Isn't it okay to get off work? Let's go, God bless, come to Thin Kin Restaurant for a drink, I invite you. The man wondered, why don't you care about anything? Lam Fong turned away and calmly replied, what's more? Isn't your majesty's decision very good, the boy Song Van Tang died without all his sins, what he did, slashing him twenty times is not unjust, if we can't overthrow the prince this time, next time we'll have to think a little more clearly. The man's face looked sad, TSK, is that so? Lam Fong fantasized about the system, who cares about these small things, hurry up and draw prizes is the main thing, just draw prizes. The sky is clear and cloudy, there are guards constantly calling for your highness to come back. That was Song Van Long's subordinate. He immediately asked his subordinates to talk to the court and listen. Everything was told by the subordinates, that's it. Van Long's hands clenched the armrest of the chair and smiled softly, he he, father is still forcing me to show my attitude. Looking at it, I saw that Van Lin wanted to use Van Tang to bite me, wanted to use a knife to slash around, but he also knew that I would not leave Van Tang alone. The subordinate asked, what should we do, your highness? Van Long confidently assured, he taught me and Van Lin to play chess for so many years, this time in return I taught him once. Day then night, two birds were happily together on the wing of a small tree. Suddenly, they were so scared that they couldn't stand when they heard a loud vomit. That sound came from Lam Fong. He limped into the room, grabbed his neck, gagged. How could rubies make something so hard to drink? Lam Fong still thinks, this bowl of medicine, the old bowler can't drink anymore. After a while of trying to swallow, he breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, Lam Fong was happy again, clapping his hands together and laughing in happiness, it was the most touching moment. The system suddenly appeared at this moment, surprising him a bit, but still very excited. Let's see. The system announces that if you successfully sneak into the underground base without being detected, the number of prize draws will be X1. Successfully photographed evidence of high-tech human testing, number of prize draws X1. Successfully lasted three minutes under the hands of aerodynamic master Deep Thua, number of prize draws X2. Successfully punished Tong Van Tang for speaking rudely, number of prize draws X1. Success testifies to an important turning point of the empire, number of prize draws X1. Lam Fong gently touched his chin with great joy and a little wonder. The boy Tong Van Tang was indeed itchy, but he testified to what an important turning point the empire was, was Tong Van Tang so important? After thinking about it, I didn't care much, sighed and said, let it go, draw the prize first, go. He used his index finger to select the prize draw button. After drawing the prize, Lam Fong received a locator transmitter X1, one use of a nitrogen shield X1, a high-grade earth-level Tian Kuang infinite attack X1, a low-grade earth-level spiritual weapon of the divine sword fire dragon X1, and a gas pill X1, a pack of legendary sparkling tea X1, delicious spicy sticks X1. A look full of surprise appeared in Lam Fong's eyes, wow, this time has really improved a lot. After receiving the gift, Lam Fong shouted and said, strangely, from today onwards, I will go into seclusion and not see anyone. Chu Wei also responded loudly, I know. Three days later, the boy went to see Lam Fong but was stopped by Zhu Yi. He did not receive heavenly protection. Fong brother was in seclusion. He specifically told me not to let anyone bother him. The man coldly said, I don't want it either, but this is your majesty's decree. Having said that, the man walked straight into the room, no matter how much he tried to stop him. Chu Wei chased after me and tried to stop me, oh, I can't barge in. The man's hand was now placed on the door. Suddenly, Lam Fong let out a long breath. That breath was so strong that it could open the door, making it impossible for men and women to move forward. The man was not surprised at all, this breath, Lin Fong. At this moment, Lam Fong breathed normally again. So that breath is the result after cultivating, the bones are strong, wonderful. The man opened the door and walked in. Lam Fong was surprised and asked, him, heaven, why are you here? Men don't rush, wait until you shower and change clothes before talking. After telling the story, Lam Fong didn't quite understand, Van Ling called me over there, what's going on? His majesty is holding a banquet tonight, you are the son-in-law, of course you have to come with the princess. Lam Fong felt confused, huh if I remember correctly, aren't Tong Van Tang's head going to be beheaded tonight? Do you still want to hold a funeral? The two of them chatted as they walked. The man did not know what the real reason was. According to the decree, his majesty held a banquet to invite all the mandarins and the royal family to enter the palace. Lam Fong confirmed that there was a smell of conspiracy. The ready-made man coughed and asked, Lam Fong, are you in the wind scene? Lam Fong was also surprised by this question. Well, I just found out that I've been free for the past two days. 
By the way, I'm staying at home to make a breakthrough. I can't just stay stuck at the peak of Tian Nuyan Peak. The man was probably jealous of his strength, holding the sword tightly in his hand, conveniently, conveniently breaking through. Lam Fong calmly recounted, well, in the past I always had a chi pill, I didn't have time to use it, otherwise I would have gone into seclusion a long time ago, but yesterday I just got a chi pill, so it was convenient to go to the chi dynamic realm. Consolidate the realm, now it is level 3 aerodynamic realm. After hearing this, the men were all sweaty. As the two people walked away, the man asked again, do you still have that medicine? Lam Fong said again, it's over, night comes again, the lights come on in the palace, the bustling stream of people is slowly entering the palace, at the same time, the great Duke Tua Van Lin and his concubine Lam Fong got married, the two entered with solemn expressions, Lam Fong wondered and turned to look at Van Lin, Van Lin, they saw you and didn't say hello, do you have an opinion? Her voice sounded sad, him, in their eyes, how could a woman be the emperor and have a big brother, making them always have delusions, a look of resolute determination appeared in my eyes, so I was forced to ascend the throne, definitely, Lam Fong whispered in Van Lin's ear, hem, Van Lin, do you have some inside information? What does the emperor want to do tonight? Van Lin closed her eyes and said, you will know soon, at the same time, the eldest prince Song Van Long, the third prince Song Van Phi, and the duke of Wei Duong Lu were all married. The Van Lin and Lam Fong people immediately turned their heads to look. As soon as the three of them entered, they received a warm welcome from everyone. I see your majesty and your highness. Van Long expressed his modesty, I am no longer the crown prince, everyone calm down, thank you for your kindness. In front of him was a group of cloud spirit people, he was a bit surprised so hum. Even pretended to be close, even though we hadn't seen each other for many days. Van Lin softly called two times, Big Brother. Having the opportunity to meet, Van Lin offered to ask, why didn't Big Brother come to the meeting a few days ago? Van Tang has caused great trouble, making father so angry that he wanted to behead him. Van Long calmly responded, the country has national laws, the emperor commits a crime and is punished like a commoner, what he did was wrong, he must accept the consequences himself. Van Lin was extremely confused, could it be that Big Brother didn't save him? He just smiled a little, then continued walking without saying anything else. That night the moon was still as full as any other night. In the palace, there is a banquet, dancers are dancing and singing to serve everyone. Besides, there is also a trumpet player. The emperor sipped a glass of wine and looked at Van Long and said, Van Long, it's been a while since you've come to the palace to ask for peace, has something happened? Van Long was cold with a tense expression. There were no relatives in the palace. Who could he ask for peace? The emperor let out a loud noise and gently picked up the glass of wine. Even if you don't care about the concubine in the harem, I am still your biological father. Van Long's hatred, a person who wants to kill my brother, is also worthy of being a father. Van Fai spoke in panic, big brother, you're drunk, quickly, quickly admit your mistake to your father. Van Lin sideways looked at Van Fai and smiled lightly, he he, Van Fai, I haven't drank a drop of wine yet, how can I get drunk? I accept your kindness, with one thing, having played the role of a kind father and filial son for so many years, I'm a bit tired, so I won't act anymore today. What do you say, father? There are people patrolling outside right now. Suddenly a door opened slightly, a person appeared with his mouth open until he drooled, the soldiers heard the noise and turned around in surprise, huh, holding a sword pointed at that room, someone, doesn't know the curfew, a man in black rushed out from the room, banging the door open, the soldiers faces turned white with terror, at that moment, someone discovered something strange and shouted loudly for everyone to know, hurry and see, looks like it's on the Vietnamese side. Not only that, you see there is also fire in the east, is it a fire? The emperor in the palace was speechless when he heard Van Long's question. At this time, the sound of soldiers' footsteps slowly entering the palace. He knelt down before the emperor and reported. Your majesty, within the imperial city, a large number of monks of unknown origin are rioting, there are nearly tens of thousands of people, gathering towards the imperial city from all directions. The emperor gently stroked his chin, he knew, go find Vong Tong Mart, he knew what to do. The soldiers immediately obeyed the instructions clearly. The emperor spoke to everyone present in the palace, my dears, it seems the banquet has to stop here. Please go to the center of the palace to hide for a while. A continuous stream of people walked out from inside. The emperor felt extremely comfortable, oh, it was quiet. In the palace now, only Van Long remains. How is it, Van Long, is it possible to cooperate? You used those experimental items to cause chaos in the city, just to lure away the soldiers and horses in the city. Now, not only the standing army, the forbidden army and the cavalry in the north and south camp, I have also sent them out. What to do next? The emperor bent down and looked at the cloud dragon, what is your next move? 
Yun Ling suddenly appeared and shouted, Song Van Long, you are too much. She expressed her displeasure and blatantly blasphemed and caused chaos in the inner city. Do you want to cause rebellion? Van Long smirked, causing a reaction. Cause chaos? Tong Van Lin, why don't you understand the deep thoughts of this great emperor? Van Lin is extremely upset. What are you talking about? I don't understand. Van Long had to explain, you always walk the same path as your wise man, and in this life you will not be able to sit on the royal throne. Our father is forcing us to walk the path of domination. Van Lin stared in surprise, not believing it was true, you, what did you say? The emperor still let Van Long finish his intentions. He raised you to the position of crown prince. Do you think he really wants to let a woman be the king? Van Long slowly picked up the glass of wine. He told her to think carefully and see if the people next to you are all conservatives, opposing reform, opposing increasing military equipment, opposing unification. Van Lin heard that and was a little scared so she took a step back. So, so what? That is also my old wish. Isn't it right that the country will not suffer and let people live in peace and prosperity? Van Long straight up threw down the glass of wine. Yes, of course it's true, but the mistake is that you were born in Dai Qin born into this royal family full of men. The second half of his life is preparing for the unification of this continent, including his birth, growth, and direction. And our discord. Van Fai once again spoke up to stop her, to the point of knocking over the entire wine table. Sir, sir, what are you talking about? Brother, please don't try to harm your father. Duke Wei was afraid that Van Fai would cause trouble, so he attacked Noyet right when Van Fai was trying to persuade her. No, don't. Van Fai was unable to react in time. Duke Wei held on to Fai Van tightly. Van Long is grateful for this action. Master, I'm sorry. Go do what you should do. Van Long smiled slightly. Yes. Next is my private matter with him. Tong Van Lin, you can take your people away. I'll just give you one chance. He coldly looked at her and asked, go or die. Both sides looked at each other with indignation, go or die. Van Lin was confused, glared, sweating, unable to speak in complete sentences. I? After a while, the bodyguard decided to speak up. I said this. Eldest grandson, have you forgotten me? Even if everyone in command of the army leaves, I am alone. Still able to resist thousands of thousands of horses, the flow of power surrounding this bodyguard was extremely great. Lam Fong saw this and was surprised, what kind of realm is this uncle in? I feel like under his hands I can't withstand more than one move. Van Long smiled lightly, then replied, how could I forget someone, Uncle Li, the only peak true essence realm of great Qin, the ultimate expert who has half a foot into the divine journey, if it wasn't because there was someone by his side, I would also don't wait another three years. Because it was today, he was holding some kind of treasure in his hand. The flow of power surrounded as if it wanted to control the entire place, covering from the inside of the palace to the outside of the citadel. Outside, there were a group of people lurking behind the wall. They were wearing armor and each had a gun in their hand. The commander leading the charge said countdown. Five seconds left, five, four, three, two, one. The entire city is covered and formed. Each step hurriedly entered, form a legal barrier, check the equipment in hand, prepare to rush in. Everyone shouted in unison, and clearly, the sword in Uncle Lai's hand suddenly fell. Uncle found it interesting, but I couldn't feel the aura. Uncle Lai looked up at Van Long and asked, did you do it right? Van Long proudly replied, otherwise who will? From inside his shirt he took out a gun, okay? He pointed the gun at the cloud spirit, now there was no need to choose any more. Van Lin, don't blame me, I gave you a chance. Van Long straight up honked the horn. Before her eyes was the phenomenon of a bullet attacking her at a very fast speed. Yet Lam Fong rushed forward to block the bullet for her. That bullet went directly into his shoulder. Van Lin is extremely worried. Lam, Lam Fong. I'm in so much pain that I can't open my eyes, it's all so painful. Van Lin Bei hugged him tightly, afraid he would lose his life. Van Long doesn't feel very happy. Whom? Can it be helped? Then, Van Long pointed his gun at the emperor. Coming to you. We've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Five years, do you know how we lived these five years? Every time I see you, it makes me nauseous, but I can't help but act out, until today. The emperor asked again, do you want to kill me now? Then you will be able to live up to your mother's name and become the new emperor of the great concubine. As soon as he finished speaking, a bullet shot out from the gun. The emperor took the bullet directly, wow. He fell to his knees, his face covered in sweat from pain. Van Long stood tall in front of him, I don't like your too smart appearance. Indeed, you have succeeded, I am being forced to become more and more like you. Therefore, I am very curious, how long can your leisure be maintained under the torture tools of the twelve tortures? The emperor replied in pain, it seems you don't even want to save your face for me. Van Long smiled faintly, face, he he, to shut the mouths of the ministers outside, isn't this all taught by you, father? The emperor smirked, very well, you are now my best successor. Van Long begins to heat up. 
then grabbed the emperor's collar, this thing that was no better than a dog or pig, could still say such words at this point, eagerly. Van Long continued to use a gun on the emperor, his eyes were white, his teeth were clenched in anger, it was all because of you forcing me, because of you forcing me. Van Ling cried out to her father, intending to rush in to rescue her, but Lam Fong held her back and stood still. Van Lin doesn't understand why you have to stand and watch like that, you. Lam Fong calmly smiled and replied, it's not the right time yet. 